Welcome to Photoshop. The class is now going to switch to a screencast method so I can show you live what's going on my screen while I'm talking. I wanted to kind of show you around the basic interface of Photoshop. And one of the first things I want you to do is get the workspace set up exactly like my screen is so that when I do things on the screen, um, you'll be able to follow along and the windows are all set up in the same way. So a simple way to do this, is this is the default setting. If it doesn't look like this, this is how you get your workspace to be set up. So you're going to go to Window, you're going to go to Workspace, and you're going to make sure that Essentials, your default, is selected. And also, just for good measure, go ahead and reset the Essentials. So that's going to reset my panel to the default setting. So it should look like this. If it varies a little bit, that's okay. You might have a different version than mine, but as long as it's close. And so this is some of the things I like to do first. I don't really uh, use my libraries panel that often, so I'm actually just going to click and drag some of these windows out and delete any of the ones that I really don't want to clutter up my workspace. I want to have a nice, clean workspace environment. Um, some of the things, and this is a, uh, you can expand panels. So expand and contract if you need more workspace. And I want to go ahead and do a few other things. History is incredibly important to me. And I want to have my Histories panel. You could drag and drop these tabs anywhere you want. I'm just going to put it there for now because I'm always using my History. Device Preview, I only use on certain occasions. So for right now, I really don't need it. So I'm just going to drag this tab out and delete it. So I have my Layers panel. I have Channels, which is essential. Uh, paths, I'm not going to use right away, but I'm not going to delete that. I'm going to keep that on there. My History panel is incredibly important. It's how I can go back and forward in my history to certain points in my design. Um, adjustments and then properties is important. Um, I have my color, color panel and I could drag this out and arrange this any way I want. Um, so color is important. Obviously your swatch panel is important as well. So there's a few other uh, panels I want to get loaded that I feel like I use a lot. So if you ever want to load a new panel over here, uh, all you have to do is go to Window and you can load any of these that you need. Um, the Layers is already loaded. And so I'm just going to go and see which one styles. Hmm. Channels, Character. I actually feel like this pretty much nails everything we're going to need. So we're already set up, we've got our workspace set up. And so let's kind of go over the basics. So this left side is your toolbar. Of course you can uh, expand it out to be two rows or you can have it all the way down the side, whatever your preference. I like to leave it as one row because I can just kind of go down and scan it really quickly. Anytime you see a small little arrow on an icon, you can actually click and hold and you have some sub options that you can select. So a eraser, eraser tool and some other options as well. But some of the most used tools are the first one that is available that you see. So uh, let's see, let's go down to here. This is your burn tool, but if I hover over it, you also have your dodge tool. And so you can quickly switch between different tools this way. And dodge adds highlights to your photos and burn adds kind of shadows or lowlights. So I constantly hold down the mouse and switch between the two as I edit photos. So Photoshop is really broken out, down into three components. You have your toolbar to the left, you have your layers pa panels to the right, and on the top you have several different menu options as well. When I do all my photo editing, I actually do a lot of that from this image tab, which gives me lots of photo editing capabilities. Uh, there's also filters if I ever want to sharpen or blur or add feather to a certain layer. Um, you have that as well. And it seems a little overwhelming. There are a lot of options. You have this right side, this left side, and this, these top options going on. But as we slowly do projects, you realize you really only use about 20 to 30 percent of these frequently. And there's a lot of tools that I just use very rarely and on certain occasions. So do not feel overwhelmed. So let's go ahead and open a new file and start playing around because that's really how I mastered Photoshop is just years of playing around doing photo manipulations to really kind of practice and see what these tools do. So let's go ahead and go to File, New, and it's going to bring up a options panel here for me. This may look different pretending, uh, depending on what kind of Photoshop version you have. This is the newest Creative Cloud, so it's constantly updated. So this is kind of a new look. Uh, they changed, the, changed how this uh, new opening new file panel looks uh, last year. So let's go ahead and get started with, um, let's open up 
let's do something in uh, pixels. So it's, let's say we're doing a web ad. Uh, let's do a 500 pixels by 500 pixel web ad. I'm going to keep. I'm going to make my resolution 300 because as we learned before, if we have a retina dis uh, display, sometimes you want to have a higher DPI for even your digital images. Um, so color mode, we know it's digital, so let's do a RGB mode. Uh, and that's about it. Background could just remain white. Uh, don't worry about anything else. Orientation. Uh, let's do port. You could do portrait or landscape. Let's do portrait. So let's go ahead and create create our file. So this is kind of our web ad. Of course, you can have tabs of different files that are open. But let's go ahead and zoom in. You can actually go down to this bottom. Let's zoom in 200 percent. So let's practice uh, our first thing. This will be really easy is to practice adding some text to our box. So we're going to go down here in our toolbar and we're going to select this um, type typography uh, tool. So let's go ahead and uh, click anywhere on here. We're going to do test. So I have some default colors that are set here from a previous project I was working on. And so you'll notice when you click over, I always have this on my layers. That's that's what I, the two panels I use the most is layers and I use history up here. Um, so those I kind of leave on because I use them so much. So this is the lifeblood of the Photoshop program is the layer system. So you notice when I added a new uh, text box, it created a separate text layer. And I also have my background layer. So I can continue to add different layers and move things around so I can actually move them on top of each other and behind each other. So here's our text box. So I'm just going to go ahead and select. And here's a little trick. Um, see how I move it around? There's nothing around my text box. We want to go up to here to show transform controls. Make sure that is clicked. When I uh, click that, now I have my, I kind of see the outline of my layer. So make sure that's checked. I don't think it's checked by default. So that really helps me. So now I can see it. So now I can take, this is my transform controls options. So when I hover around to these anchors, these little boxes right here, I can actually hold down shift, which we, we as we learned in a previous lesson, you can actually hold down shift and click and drag your mouse and you can actually make it bigger or smaller. And it keeps its dimension, so it looks nice. If I did not hold shift and I just kind of dragged it around, I can, uh, it doesn't keep the same dimensions. Um, so let's go ahead and do this and click enter. Well, that looks awful. So one way to kind of redo or undo and go back in your history one step is to go to history, history panel. You need, I can actually click, this is the most recent step I did. I'm going to click up and I can actually go back in time to what I was doing before. So I'm just going to click here and now I'm back. Oops. So I'm going to hold down shift and drag. So I'm just going to practice that for a little bit. Hold down shift to drag and click enter. And so this is our, um, sometimes I like to name layers, but a lot of times I, if I have too many layers, I'll just kind of leave it as a default. Um, but if you really wanted to um, kind of name your layers, you can. So let's play around with this particular type. So I'm going to go ahead and select it, and right here I see it selected on my layers panel. I can actually double click this little icon, I'm able to change the font. So let's go ahead and double click, and notice how it's highlighted, and now I can change the font. So I'm just going to go up here to my font options panel, which is going to appear on the top, and I'm going to find a font that I like. We'll do this one, Bondoni. Let's make it, and this is where you can change the font weight. So bold italic, that's nice. And I want to change the color because that's a really bright, hideous color. So I'm going to double click. And you'll notice right here I have the option to change the font color. So I'm just going to change it to blue. And let's go ahead and see what else we can do. We could change the size. Oops. Make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So I want to add another block of text. 
So instead of just double clicking, because I can double click, press enter, and type more text, I'm actually going to create a new text box. So let me go back in my history. There we go. I'm going to go down to my toolbar, um, call this two. This is my second layer. I'm just holding down shift and getting the right size. So I can double click this and I can make this a different font. Let's make that regular. Now I have my second font. I can double click and change some settings. This is my alignment. If I want to have a center alignment, a right alignment, or a left alignment, I can set my alignment in this text option panel. And let me do a different font, or a, uh, let's do orange. Perfect. So um, let's do a block. Now that we've done a little bit of text, let's add a block, just a simple filled in rectangle. So I'm actually going to take this uh, shape tool, it's a rectangle marquee tool, and I'm going to actually create a new layer. So here's all our layers that have automatically been created when we use the type tool. And this one, we're going to create a new layer ourselves. So we're just going to click on this button right here, which is how we create a new layer. So this is my new, I'm going to name it just for the sake of keeping track. And I'm just going to name this box. So now this is a layer with nothing on it. It's totally transparent. See this little, almost a checkerboard pattern. That means there's no color or anything in this layer yet. It's brand new. So we're going to take this rectangle marquee, marquee tool. And I'm just going to make a simple box. So I'm just, I'm just holding, down, holding down the mouse button and dragging. And I'm going to get my paint bucket tool. This is how you fill in colors on any shapes. So I'm getting my paint bucket tool and let's select a color. Let's do something really bright and crazy. Let's do this red color. And now I have my paint bucket tool and I just click anywhere inside the selected area. And I have my shape. So now to unclick, go ahead and click on the, uh, this box tool again, the rectangle tool, and just click anywhere outside of it, and it'll click off. But that takes a little bit of practice to get used to. So there is our box, and so we have our different layers here. So we can actually drag and drop the layers into different points. So right now this is the very top and this is the very bottom. So if this is the very top and I drag the box over the other layers, it covers it up. But I want it to be a background. So it's as simple as clicking over here in this blank area and dragging it down to the very bottom. So now I'm just taking, I'm just kind of hovering over my transform tool. And there we go. So uh, this back layer and move it by accident. To prevent that, I can actually lock my layer. So to lock my layer, I'm going to go up here to the lock icon. So I'm going to lock it. So now I can't move it or touch it. So that's great if I have lots of layers on top I want to work with. Let's unlock it for now because we're still playing around. So I'm going to actually double click this and change this back to white. So let's create one more box just to practice. And actually, let's make, create a circle. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm holding down the Shift key and dragging so I can create kind of a perfect circle. Get my paint bucket tool. Let's make this green and I'm just going to click on the inside of my selection and I have myself a circle and I'm going to actually hold down shift and make it smaller. So now you can see that this layer is on top. So you see this two is on top and this is behind it. So I want this circle to be in the background but above the red box. So I just kind of sandwich it in between the other layers. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And you can see how you can really play around with layers. So let's make this a different color. Make that black, actually. Let's make this black. Great. Yeah, the colors are a little off, but at least you're kind of understand, understanding the layering system. So you have a little bit of power when it comes to editing each layer. Um, there's something called the Layer Options uh, panel, and what you'll do is you go ahead and uh, select, and I'm in my Layers panel. I can actually dra drag my Layers panel out here if I wanted to really have it bigger, be larger, um, but I'm going to keep it there for now. Um, but I can double-click on any of these layers. So let's say I want to do have a drop shadow on this green 
circle. And I want to do some other editing to it as well. I'm actually going to double click in this blank area and I have what's called a layer styles panel. There you go, layer styles. And I can add different kinds of styling. Let me make this a little bit shorter. Oh, I think that's probably default. I'm not able to make it a little bit shorter. Um, but you can do several different options. So I'm going to drag this off the screen so I can be able to uh, show you some details. So let's go ahead and add a drop shadow. This is probably something you're going to use a lot. So I'm going to click on this drop shadow, just highlight it, and you'll notice it does a nice drop shadow to that layer. I can drag my layer around, drag it around so it's maybe going to the bottom right. Maybe the light is coming from the top and shining down. And you can change the color of your shadow. Um, so I'm just going to keep it as a black dark shadow. And you can change the opacity or the transparency of your shadow. So I can make it really, really apparent, or I can make it real subtle. And of course, as we studied, sometimes subtlety looks a lot better than, than way too much. So let's do like a nice subtle um, distance. That's going to uh, bring it closer as you go to the left. It's going to bring it closer to the shape, and this is going to bring it further away. So I like a little bit of distance because it adds a realism to your shadows. Um, your spread is going to be a little bit different. It's going to spread it out a little wider. Um, I usually don't do too much spread. I usually keep spread kind of default. And size, it's going to expand it out. If you do uh, a, a, see zero pixels, you're going to see exactly where the shape is. And so let's blur it out just a little bit, increase the size, kind of get a nice realistic shadow. Uh, let me reduce the opacity maybe a little bit, and maybe bring the distance in a little bit. So just playing around. So that's probably going to be your most used layer uh, style option. There's several others that you can do. There's also an outer glow. You can actually add a glow. And this is when I suggest opening up the layer styles panel and just play around with a lot of these options. Gradient overlay. We can add a cool gradient. Um, these are gradients I've actually found online and loaded. So default, you're only going to have a few gradients. So if you're not seeing all these gradients, don't worry because uh, these are found online. Uh, they're not default. So let's kind of pick a cool gradient. Let's do one a little bit brighter to contrast with that. I like that. I don't like it with the red, but we'll change that in a little bit. Um, so I have, this is the gradient. So we can edit our gradient. Um, we can take away certain colors and add different colors. So let's say I want it to be darker. I'm actually going to take away, I'm actually just click and hold down and it disappears. And I can actually click, double click on this little um, option. I can make it darker. So now you see it got darker a little bit up here. I actually move these around so it changes the way it gradiates. So you could kind of see this is just play around. And the closer these two are together, the harsher the transition is. So you see how harsh and uh, it's not subtle at all. So if you drag these apart, you'll have a nice subtle gradation. And so we'll get into gradients a little bit later in the class, especially in Illustrator, where we do a lot of work with gradients. That's just a quick overview of how you do it. Um, color overlay. Um, this is another way to change the color. You can change it when you do your uh, paint bucket tool, when you do your shape. But if you want to change the color of the whole layer, you can just do color overlay, and it'll change the whole layer color. But we're going to keep it on the gradient for now. Let me go back and do a different gradient. Um, let's pick one I actually like. Let's do that one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Inner glow. You're going to be able. I rarely use some of these up here because they do tend to look a little bit dated. Um, so I'm very careful with using inner glow and inner shadow. Inner shadow can be cool. Adds a little shadow to the uh, to the opposite side. Instead of dropping the shadow, it adds a shadow on the shadow to the inside of the shape. So just to kind of show you an example, so that can kind of make it look 3D if you use inner shadow. Stroke adds a stroke around the object, but I do not like to use stroke too much because um, notice how it's a little bit uh, choppy here. It's not very smooth. Um, I like to do strokes and things in Illustrator because it's much more smoother because it's a vector environment. So I, I don't really play around with too much of these. So really, I use the gradient, I use the color overlay, and I use the drop shadow. And uh, that's pretty much it. There's also pattern overlay, which you have to be careful with pattern, because it can overdo a pattern. 
but a neat way to add texture. A lot of times I just add my own texture over top so I don't use pattern overlay too much. So let's go back to gradient and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click my font here. I'm going to change this to white real quick, real quickly. So now that red is really clashing with the purple. So I'm going to click and double click on my box. And I got my layer options panel. And let's do another gradient. Let's do one of like an opposite color. I have a lot of options here. Something that'll go really good with purple, maybe that color. Sticking with like a brownish color. So I want to actually add a texture. So let's add a texture to that. And we need to scale that down. Let's see, depth. The resolution on that texture is not really good. So a lot of times I just don't mess with that too much. There's a lot better ways to add texture. So there's, there's your layer options panel. So you can add the same layer styles, drop shadow to text as well, since that's also a layer. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this and add a little bit of a drop shadow to both of my text uh, layers. And I want to be able to do some more text effects. I can double click my text and I have lots of options up here. I can change the font. I can actually change the weight, which I'm going to do. Change that to black. I can change the size. I can change whether it's right or left aligned and the color. Um, but I want to be able to change the spacing and have more control over my font. There's actually two different um, panels that we need to load that'll give us more options with our font. So let's go to Window and let's load our two uh, options, our panels here that'll help us edit our text. And so the first one's called Character. Let's go ahead and load that one. So you'll notice that Character and Paragraph both loaded. Um, if you do not see Paragraph, just go to Window and Paragraph is also there, so make sure that's checked. So these are two, and let me see if I can drag this. There we go, that helps. Um, so this is our character and paragraph panel. So now that I've highlighted my, let's go drag this down so you can see all my layers. I have my layer selected. Um, so I can change all my font this way too. But it also gives me the ability to change the kerning or the spacing between the font. So negative is going to make it really tight spacing and then this will make it really wide. And it only goes up to 200, but you can definitely push that and make that number much higher. So you can do 800 and have a really nice, cool looking spacing here. Uh, so let me double click and let's see what else can we do. We can also do the spacing if we had uh, multiple sentences. So let's go uh, second. So right now I have almost no spacing between my two sentences. I think I was working on another project that I changed the gap, the spacing. Uh, so this could be the letting, which as we discovered is the space between sentences. I'm going to go ahead and set it in auto. So I can kind of, that's de auto is default. So that's the default spacing. And let's bring this back to 100 spacing so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so I want to uh, close the gap. There's kind of a wide gap between this first second, or this first sentence and the second sentence in this text box. So I'm going to change the letting. So go down, auto is default, but I'm going to close the gap. And this is where you just have to experiment and find out what number works for you. That works great, 30. Um, so I'm going to change the alignment as well. That's going to be on your paragraph panel right here. And these are all the different alignment options you have. So I'm just going to center align it and flip back to character. So this is going to take a little practice to get used to. Let's move this up here. Let's move this here. And I'm just going to double click. I'm going to change the weight uh, to medium. And you really don't need the, these options up here when you have your character and paragraph panels loaded. So that's one way you just don't worry about it up top. You already have pretty much all your options you have here here on your panel, but you got more options here. This is all caps, so I'm going to take all caps off, but I kind of like all caps, so I'm going to keep that on. 
Um, so I just changed the weight to balance this top, which is bold, and the bottom, which is going to be thinner. And so let's see what else can we do with paragraph. You can double click and do a left alignment, right alignment, center. Uh, that's pretty good. So I'm kind of happy with that. So we kind of just holding down shift and I'm making it smaller. You can make it smaller by changing the font size up here. Oops. I can just change it up here. Or um, an easier way is to hold down shift and to change it because then it keeps the letting between the sentences the same. You can just drag around. So a lot of times when we're working with photos, you need to resize a certain document. So let's say a client wants something in a different size and you already have this as a small, this is a web graphic right now. Um, I want to resize this. So I'm going to go to image and image size and I can be able to change and scale the image. So right now this is a 1000 by 1000 pixels. Let's say I want it to be 2500. Click on 2500 and I can scale it up. And you can also change, I can actually zoom out, so I'm going to do 25%. So I, this is a much bigger graphic, but I'm zoomed out on it. Um, so there's two different ways to resize images. You can do the image size, which sizes the image, or you could do a canvas size, which you can expand and contract the canvas. Um, so let's do the canvas size. So let's say I want to add, I want to keep all of this the same, but I want to just add some more outside of it. So let's go to pixels. You can actually switch it to inches if you'd like, if you want to make this a print document all of a sudden. Um, so let me go to, let's expand it. So this will expand the canvas this way. Let's leave it right there in the middle and see it's 2,500 now. Let's make it 3,000 by 3,000. So I'm now making the canvas 3,000 by 3,000, but our image stays 2,500 pixels. So if you wanted to kind of make your outside a little bigger. So there's two ways to resize. Let's play around with image size and canvas size to kind of get the desired effect. Uh, so let me see. I want to show you guys next how to cut uh, certain objects out. So I have this circle right here. I'm just going to move this around. And let's say I like this circle. We can easily duplicate that layer. So I have this layer selected and I'm going to go up to layer and I'm going to go down to duplicate layer. So I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but these are some of the most used options that I do. Uh, so I want to create a new circle. So I'm going to make sure my layer is highlighted. Or I can just select it with my mouse. Layer, duplicate layer. And just click OK. And I now have two layers. And I can keep doing it. Layer, duplicate layer. So I can kind of create a pattern of sorts if I wanted to, or I can make certain ones smaller, hold down, hold down shift and drag, or make certain circles bigger, kind of create a kind of texture. Make that much smaller, so you can kind of see what you can do here. And I could even drag this over here and make this, um, move this up in the layer system to the very top and it can actually cover up my text a little bit. So it almost looks like it's uh, kind of 3D, like it's popping out at you. I'm going to change this orange because I'm just not feeling it. Just, just a personal thing I'm doing. Um, I need something with enough contrast. Let's do blue. That's dark enough. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to do some photo editing and this is where Photoshop really shines and it's what I use Photoshop mostly for is for the photo editing and photo manipulation. So I have this tip, uh, typical stock photo I found online it has this beautiful blue hue. I'm going to see what we can do with colors and kind of show you some things that we can do in our image tab or image drop down menu system. Um, this is where we do the, where I do the majority of my photo editing. And I'm not going to uh, go through all of these because if I did, um, 
I would spend 20 hours doing it. So I'm just going to go over the things that I feel like I use the most in my design career. Um, so when you go down to image, you have different modes. You can switch right now it's on RGB, but you could switch it to CMYK if this was going to be a printed canvas photo or you were going to save this and import it into Illustrator to do maybe a poster design. You can switch it to CMYK. And just click OK and then all of a sudden it's switched to a CMYK um, environment. But I'm going to go back on my history. Of course I can click here to restore it back to RGB. Uh, we're going to keep it in RGB for now, um, but you can also switch it to grayscale. Let's say you're doing a newspaper ad and it has to be in grayscale. Um, you can just simply convert it to grayscale and you have a nice clean black and white image. So I'm just going to go back on my history <clears throat> and go back to where we were. Um, so let's keep going down. So that's mode. Of course, in the next couple of lessons, I'm going to go over duotone, which is right here. Um, so we'll go over that in a little bit. So adjustments. This is where I go all the time is um, image adjustments. I'm going to go down the list just to pick a few that I use the most. Uh, brightness contrast is great when I'm doing, uh, uh, if there's a dark photo. Clients love to send photos that are way too dark, so I always kind of up the brightness just a tad. Um, you can definitely overdo it. So just do brightness a tad. Contrast, of course, adds more harshness between the highlights and the shadows. And reducing the contrast kind of blends it a little, uh, that makes that shadows and highlights more subtle. So just click OK. Um, exposure, this is uh, my favorite way to increase the brightness of really dark photos is actually um, doing the exposure tab and actually um, reducing or increasing the gamma correction. Uh, sometimes that really helps. Um, you can't see it quite as much here just because this is a single toned photo, but I'll show you a little, oh, there it goes, um, a little bit later on a person. You can really increase the brightness quite a bit on a certain piece. And you can really overdo it. You just uh, do a little bit. Um, when you go all the way to the right, it's crazy. So just kind of do some nice small movements with these, kind of find the right adjustment. Exposure is going to increase the amount, um, let's say, the photo is exposed to. Uh, so let's click OK. And I can always go back in my history and redo. I can click back and forth between my tabs in my history and find out if I like it. So I actually don't like what I did with exposure, so I'll just go back a step to where I was. Um, so let me do color balance. I use this a lot when I want to kind of just adjust the hue or the overall color of a certain piece. So this is blue. I want to add a little more green to it so you can actually increase the green. Of course, make sure you also pay attention to down here your tone balance and do just kind of play around because this will bring out the shadows, the green and shadows and also highlights. So I kind of do a little bit of each. I kind of like this nice teal. I just love blue-green. That's a beautiful color. So if you go back in my history, you can see it was blue. Now we kind of change it to this um, teal color. So I use color balance a lot. Um, I use hue and saturation a lot as well. Let's go ahead and bring this over. So if I want to go ahead and change the hue, I can just click and drag. And I can go pretty much all around the rainbow. So if I want to make this a bright yellow for a certain ad piece, I can do that. Um, saturation, this will add more of the rich color, but sometimes you can overdo it. If I reduce saturation, I can pretty much make it a black and white. And of course, lightness. I'm going to click OK. Let's keep going down our list. Uh, black and white, this is probably my favorite way to make a black and white photo black and white. Um, just click on black and white. You can actually do some adjustments and bring out what was originally red. You can actually uh, increase that or decrease it. Um, so it's taking a little while to process. I'm going to give it a few minutes. And of course you click on preview to make sure you can preview it. But I'm not going to do this. is a beautiful blue. I'd hate to make that black and white. Uh, photo filter. This adds a nice filter on top of it. So you'll notice this adds an orange. If I increase the density or the effect, it adds a nice, pretty much like a, a, it's a filter. So let's go cooling filter. I can do blue, sepia. I like doing the sepia on photos when I want to add a sepia effect. Just go to fo photo filter, do sepia, and you can increase it as much or as little as you want. Um, but I kind of like my pure bright blue, so we'll keep that. Um, another one I love to use, gradient map could be pretty useful. 
This will actually apply a gradient map across the top. And I have quite a wide variety of uh, gradients I can play with. Um, so you can see how this can kind of have a cool background. If you wanted to use this as a background image. So there's uh, some different effects we can go for. That's kind of neat. So if I wanted to use this um, more subtle, I could put type over this. If I go back to where I was, that's a little harsh, but when I added the gradient map, it kind of adds it on top of it. It kind of screens it back a little bit, which is nice. Let's go back to where we were so we can see kind of the effects we're doing. I rarely use invert. Um, that just inverts the colors. I'll just show you really quickly. Um, I rarely use this because it's really funky. Um, selective color, shadows and highlights. Uh, you can also do black and white by using desaturate, but that's not my favorite method. I like doing the black and white because I can control what the previous colors were, um, how I showed you with the, uh, I like having this control when I turn it to black and white. The max look, and that's pretty much it. There's a ton of you can actually adjust your levels and your curves, which is pretty advanced in terms of photo editing. Uh, but for graphic design, I do a little less of this. Um, and uh, I just kind of do what I've just shown you, kind of some basic photo editing for um, advertising or social media graphics. So this is uh, some basic things uh, that you can do to kind of edit your photo. So I definitely wanted to do a person shot because I feel like when we do a lot of these image uh, apply some of these image effects, you can see them much better on something that has multiple colors and a wide variety of hues and tones and shades. Um, so let's, this, this is actually a edited professional photo, but I feel like it's a little dark for what I'm going to want to use it for, maybe for an ad piece. I feel like if I do print this out on a poster, it's going to come out really dark. So I can just kind of fine tune and kind of go over, kind of talk through what I'm going through to kind of make this photo a little bit better. Um, so I'm just going to go to our image tab and I'm just going to play around with a couple of options. Um, one option I can do, uh, let's see, I'm just going to work my way down the list. It's usually what I do when I open up a photo to kind of see what effects I like better. See, that's already getting a little better. I love increasing the contrast. So you notice this is low contrast. So everything is kind of washed out. But if I increase the contrast, you can see everything becomes a little more rich, doesn't it? But you could overdo it, so let's kind of do right about this level. So just doing the brightness and contrast there just made a huge difference between the original and what we just did. Just that little bit of brightening up. Uh, so let's continue to work down. Let's do exposure. Um, once again, uh, I told you in the last video I love to uh, decrease the gamma correction to help um, photos become a little bit brighter. So just do a little bit. And that would make it darker if I do the other side. So this is real subtle. This has, actually has a little bit more of a washed out brightness. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of this. Let me mess with exposure. You can see this is getting a little too bright for what I want. So let's just barely look how little and subtle these little movements are. I'm not doing a, um, a large movements on these scales. So this is a pretty large photo, so it's going to take a little while for everything to process. Okay, so let's keep working our way down. Vibrance. Vibrance. I love vibrance. If you increase the vibrance, I love this on landscape shots. You can really bring out the greens and grass and the, the blues and the skies when you increase the vibrance. And with her, the only thing, I mean, I can kind of bring a little bit more of a glowing uh, tone to her skin. So let's go back to original and let's do all the way so you can see the effect. But that's almost changing kind of her uh, skin tone a little too much. So let's kind of do in the middle. I like how it breaks out the eyes. Let's do a little more saturation. Not too much. Let's see. That can have its own kind of feeling and look if you wanted to put some cooler tones in there. But let's, I don't want her to look too like she has bronzer on. So let's do that right there. So click OK. And usually once I apply something, I always go back in my history and click back one step to kind of see the effect it had to see if I want to keep it. So if I want to uh, see, I do want to keep that. It's fairly subtle, but I, I like how it kind of brings a little more life to her face, a little warm tones. So uh, photo filter, channel mixer, 
Let me do, let's try something a little crazy. Let's see what gradient map does. That almost looks like a duotone effect, doesn't it? So let's see. Oh, wow. That can have its own kind of neat um, effect. Just applying the gradient map. Oh, whoa. Yeah, some of these are a little wacky. Oh, that looks kind of neat. I could kind of see how I can use this as a background photo now. So let's just, uh, just play it around with that. Oh, I'm not going to actually use that. There's also some auto tone options, so auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. You could try selecting these if you don't feel confident in adjusting that yourself manually in the adjustments tab, but it's going to do it automatically. It's not going to do it based on what you feel is looks good. It's going to do it based on what the computer thinks looks good, which that obviously is too harsh. So let's undo. Uh, there's also auto contrast. Sometimes I'll click on these just to see if some of the changes it makes is for the better. Uh, so that's too too harsh again. So there's kind of some other options to play around. Okay, so I feel like I'm done kind of with, uh, let me click on, let me do one more. Let me do shadows and highlights, see if I can bring anything out. Ooh, that looks nice. This is where you're just going to play around. So that almost has a painted look, but that's not really what I'm going for. You play around with the tone. There is no right or wrong answer with this kind of stuff. It's really what you think looks good to your eye, what, you're, what the intended de destination of this photo will be, what kind of emotional impact you want to make with your photo. Let me reduce that a little bit. I don't want her skin to look too orange. But wow, that has a huge impact, doesn't it? You almost don't know which one to do because they all look like they could work. Let's click OK. Let's see what kind of effect that had. Um, so we're going to click OK and it's going to go ahead and start processing. So let me go back uh, one step. So that's the effect it had and I love it. I think that's great. It really helps bring out her hair in the background a little bit. So let's go back to the very original step. So this is our first step. Uh, when we first open the document, this is what it looked like before. And just doing a couple of these adjustments, this is what it looks like now. So that's a huge difference in brightness and contrast and color and tone. It looks a whole lot better just doing a couple of adjustments that we did in five minutes. So I love to adjust every photo a client sends me or even stock photos to adjust them just a little bit to give me a, a, a better effect for what I'm going for. So now it's time to go over duo tones. So I found this beautiful image online, but I want to create kind of a single or duo tone for this piece to be able to use as a background on a flyer. So I get the first thing we want to do to do any duo tone is we need to change the mode to grayscale. So you need to remove all the existing colors on the document. So just go to image, mode, and grayscale. So you're just getting rid of all the current colors so that we can apply that single our two ink toned um, effect to this. So now we need to go back to the mode. And now, it, before, we, uh, Duotone was grayed out because it wasn't converted to grayscale yet. Uh, so now we have this option available. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Duotone. So you'll notice this has a really cool effect already, this default, uh, kind of this purple and a black. Um, I'm gonna go over monotones first. Monotone will be a single single ink tone. So this is going to be black, uh, but you could do quite a wide variety. The lighter you get, or the whiter you get, the lighter you get, and the darker you get, um, the darker the ink show up. So you can kind of do something in between, have a washed out look, if that's what you want to go for. It has a screen printed look, because screen printing is when you print with one single ink color on like a t-shirt, for example. And so this has a very similar look, where it looks like just one ink is being printed on this image. So it kind of has a neat effect. But the great thing about duotones is I'm going to actually go click on here and go down to duotones. So now I have duo which means two, so now I have two ink colors. And the trick to adding rich duotones is to have one be a lighter color and one be a darker color. So let's go ahead and do like a black and see how the black brings out all the rich shadows 
and the light color brings out all the lighter highlights. And so just kind of play around with these options. There's no wrong or right look for this. Just kind of play around. Um, we could do a bright color. Uh, let's do kind of a, a red. And we could make our shadows kind of a deep red too instead of just black. So that kind of has a very emotional response with that beautiful dark colors. You can actually do what's called a tritone, which adds a third color to the mix. Um, I rarely use this, but you can continue to keep going. There's even a quad tone. You can add four different ink colors to everything to really add some neat effects. Um, so let's go back to uh, Duotone and play around with what I think. I'd like to do a blue, purple. Let's do like a deep purple. Let's do black. What does it look like? Ooh, that's great. Let's mess with this a little bit. Kind of like a cooler tone, maybe. There we go, a little bit more of that brightness there. So just go and uh, play around with duotones a little bit. I'll have to name them before it'll let me save it. Click OK. And so we, this is our original, and this is our duotone. So a much higher emotional impact type photo when you strip the colors away and you only add one or two inks. So um, open up the photo and play around with duotones, monotones, and even tritones. So now we're going to cover gradients and color transitions with this piece. So this is just a photo, another photo I found online, and I thought it would uh, look really neat with a color transition, which is just a fancy name for a gradient. Um, so let's play around with the gradient tool a little bit. The gradient tool is right here in your toolbar. And I'm going to go ahead and select a gradient I think would look cool. Uh, let's click this nice rich purple gradient. Of course, you can make your own gradient. So let's do that to have a little practice. So I'm going to double click on this bar up top. And this is our gradient tab. We can change how it transitions to one color to the next. Uh, we can actually make our own. So um, I'm actually take this existing gradient. And I'm going to pull down on these tabs until I only have two colors left. So now I, just to make it simple, you can have as many transitions as you want. But I'm going to keep it just to two to show you an example. So let's do a blue to green. So let's click a blue, maybe like a light blue, and have it transition to, well, we could do a purple too. That might look neat. So let's do a blue to a purple, because that's a nice subtle change. And that's kind of a popular color transition right now. And you can kind of change where it switches from the left color to the right color by adjusting this middle option. You can do that. Just kind of play around to see what kind of effects the gradient will end up looking like. I click OK. So now I have my gradient tool selected. I am going to create a new layer. And this is going to be my gradient layer. And I'm just going to click and hold the mouse any direction you want to. So you can have it go across, transition from left to right. You can have it go from uh, top to bottom. But one of my favorite ways to do gradients is from left to right, or diagonally, is that, or, or the other direction because I feel like that has no more natural look. It doesn't look like a gradient that just goes across. It kind of has a natural flow. So what I'm actually going to do is make this a little bit of a darker, uh, different color. So I can make it really pop out a little more. You can see the transition a little better. So there is our gradient. It's slowly coming together here. Great. So our base layer is actually going to become our um, gradient layer. So we're actually going to make sure the gradient layer is at the very bottom. That's our base layer. And here's our image. So the image, we're actually going to change the blending mode on the image, which we uh, covered a little bit. Um, and we're going to change that so that the gradient behind it pops through. So we're changing that blending mode to allow some of the pixels to let the color through on this bottom layer. So that's what kind of the technical kind of what we're doing here. So right now it's on normal. I'm going to change it to luminosity. And you'll notice you'll see the back, the, the gradient come through, but it doesn't fade the image very much, which is kind of a neat effect. Um, normally when we would apply a gradient layer over top and maybe reduce the opacity, 
it wouldn't have the same uh, effect. It would kind of look faded. And so that's what's great about using uh, this blending mode is you can have everything be sharp, the contrast be nice. Uh, so you can always uh, play around with different blending modes. Uh, but I know luminosity is really great for, ooh, that has a really cool hip effect. I like that. Um, let's keep going. Color burn, darker color. But luminosity is kind of the one I use when I do gradient transitions like that. I just feel like it has the best effect. And so what we could do now is I like this gradient, but let's we can load another one. Just go to our gradient layer, click on our gradient uh, tool, and let's pick like a green one just to kind of try it out. I'm just applying effect on my gradient layer over top. That looks cool. Let's keep playing around. So you can see kind of the wide variety of effects. Let's see if we can get one with um, higher contrast, like this uh, blue. Let's see what else we got. I got a ton. I found these online. You can actually download um, gradient uh, packs and load them into Photoshop. So over the years, I've collected uh, quite a bit. So let's go back. We can do a black and white as well. But, you know, that's not as exciting. It's quite a different transition. Ooh, that's neat. That's cool looking. I like that one. So let's double click. Kind of see how it uh, has a lot of different transitions. It slowly gradiates. You can add more and change at different points and change the color. You could do metals as well. You click on the metal. We'll create a few metals in Illustrator a little bit later. Uh, so I can go back in my history and see which gradient I like better. I think I like my original one actually. Um, that was back here. There it is. I like that. That's great. So you can really uh, kind of spice up all your images for your uh, Facebook ads or anything other reason you'll need to, to kind of apply this effect to advertising and branding. One of the things I do the most in my design career is cutting things out and putting them on different backgrounds or changing the backgrounds. So one of the biggest things you need to learn is being able to cut these images out pretty quickly. Um, so I'm, I went ahead and opened this file. I'm just unlocking my layer by double clicking and unlocking it. And so there's a couple ways you can kind of tackle cutting this out. And one of the more simple ways is going over here to your lasso and polygon lasso tools, which should be the third one down in your toolbar. And there's actually, there's one actually right below, I'll go over this one. This is called the Quick Selection Tool and Magic Wand Tool. Go ahead and select the Magic Wand Tool. This is kind of a little cheat to select items out. If, if you have a background that is a solid color, not many colors, maybe it's a, a person on a white background, you'll see a lot of that in stock photography, you can use this uh, Magic Wand Tool to click on that solid color and it's going to select all of the uh, the colors. And uh, right now, this has a little bit of like a gradient to it, so it's not selecting all of it. So I'm actually going to hold down Shift, and notice you see the addition sign to my magic uh, icon there. I'm going to actually click here, and I'm going to continue to click until all of this is selected. And there we go. So I've already uh, selected the background, so I can remove the background. So it's going to go ahead and remove the background. And now I have this cup, and I can go ahead and take that and put that on any background I'd like. So I'm going to go back in history, one step, and um, let's say I want to just take the cup out. Um, I don't want to, I just want to isolate the cut, cup and cut that out. I'm actually going to go to select, and right now it's selecting all of this yellow part, but I want to invert that and select just the coffee cup. So I'm going to go to select and inverse. And it just it inverse, inversed, inverted, I guess would be the proper term, inverted the selection. So I'm just going to copy and paste. And I have myself a, a second coffee cup. And I can duplicate the layer. And then I can put this on a different background. So that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And we don't really need 
let's go back to my selection. Let's go back in our history to where I was selecting it. And let's copy and paste right on top. So now we have um, this in isolation. We also have the background. So I can go ahead and uh, change the background. Maybe desaturate it. And I have a separate coffee cup. So that's one really quick way. Of course, you can only do that when you have a nice solid colored background. Great way to cut things out. So now that we have this as a separate layer, we can actually double click the layer styles and we can actually add a drop shadow to this. So let me just drag this off the screen so you can see it. Add a drop shadow. Let's expand it out a little bit. Let's increase the size. Wow, that looks kind of cool. That's a little bit more shadow and dimension. And we can take our bottom layer and now that that's, we have the coffee cup on top, we can make this a different color. So let's do a gradient map and see what kind of uh, cool colors we can add, like a blue. I'm doing some different stuff here. So let's do like a teal. Let's see if we can find that real quick. Ooh, that one's bright. There we go. Let's do that for just dramatic effect. So you can see how we were able to isolate the coffee cup, put it on top, and we're able to adjust the background now. We can actually put a whole nother background, maybe a wood table background, like it's sitting on a piece of wood on a, a picnic table. We can do that. Now that this is isolated, we could pretty much do anything we want um, on uh, put it on any background. So using that magic wand tool is great. Um, but what we're going to do next is we're going to be able to cut out a person um, using a little bit of uh, this lasso tool because not everything's going to have this perfect background. So now what happens when we want to cut out a much more complicated object with a complicated background, especially when it comes from taking this person and wanting to put her on a totally different background. So that's where we're going to play around with the lasso tools. So I'm going to go ahead and go down and I'm going to select the magnetic lasso tool. So I'm actually going to zoom in just ever so slightly and go ahead and have a, a better selection. And I have my magnetic uh, lasso tool selected. I'm going to select my layer. And what the magnetic tool lasso tool does is I'm just going to click on the mouse and I'm not doing anything else. And I'm just dragging my mouse around and I'm able to, it's automatically selecting things based on what it thinks that object you're trying to select is. And it's really great for objects that have high contrast. So the, her skin against the sky, it's able to kind of select that. It doesn't work with really low contrast objects. So if her hair was on a black background, it might not be able to differentiate the objects I'm trying to select. So it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go back and fine tune the selection a little later. That's kind of a rough basic cutout, but we need to include some things. Like I wasn't able to include our hand. So I'm going to go back, make sure that my magnetic lasso tool is selected. I'm going to zoom in, let's say 60%, a little bit more so I can kind of fine tune it a little bit. And I want to add to my selection. So this is my selection. So if I were to cut this out, you can see where I, I, it, uh, I selected and was able to cut it out. So let's undo. I'm going to add to the selection, so I'm going to go to hold down shift, and you'll notice a, an addition or plus sign to that icon. So I'm just holding down shift this entire time, and I'm pressing my mouse button, and I'm able to add this selection to my already pre-existing selection that I just made. So I need to go ahead and get that camera and everything in here, and complete my shape. And I've held down shift the entire time. I can now let go. And so I was able to include this. So now if I do cut, now her hand and camera are part of the selection. So let's go ahead and do undo. So there's a few little things we can probably do a little bit better. So if I zoom in, and this is where you just go throughout the selection and smooth out the selection a little bit. So you'll see these little things where the magnetic lasso tool just got confused for a moment. So I like, what I like to do is go ahead and get the polygon lasso tool and I'm able to kind of hand select things. So I want to subtract that out of the selection, that little bit. Let me zoom in. 
I want to subtract that little thing out of the selection. So to subtract, I'm going to go over to this option, Subtract from Selection. I need to make sure that's selected. And I don't have to hold down Shift. I don't have to do anything but click my mouse once and create a shape. And it's going to cut any of that out of the selection. So I want to cut that little bit out. And it doesn't have to be perfect because there's some other tricks that we can use to smooth out our selection. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but we definitely want to remove anything we don't want to cut out. So this is what I got. So you can see the subtraction sign on the icon. That's how you know it's going to be subtracting from the selection and not adding to it. Let's go up top. I want to subtract that little area. This is probably the hardest way to cut out something, but doing it manually usually does the best job. Um, and you could do this with any kind of cutout that you need to make. So I'm holding down shift, so now it's on uh, subtraction mode. I hold down shift and it switches to addition. So I can switch between the two. So I'm adding and then I can subtract. And this took me a long time to master. So if you're feeling totally overwhelmed, like what is she doing? It took me a while to kind of switch between the two and find out what's the selection, what's subtract, what's subtracting from it, what's adding to it. So I'm going to zoom back out. Oh great, I think that's a much better selection than it was just a few moments ago. So this obviously needs a little bit more work. So we're going to go back here and we'll be able to use some other tools to kind of select this little fine hair a little bit better. So I want to select a little bit of this hair coming out. I can always trim it a little bit later. So I'm just going to take this uh, magic wand tool. I'm going to hold down the shift button. So you see my addition, I'm going to add to the selection. I'm going to select as best as I can the hair. I'm just going to click once. I'm going to add a little bit of this hair. And uh, it looks a little crazy and complicated. But we, when we put her on the next photograph, we'll be able to see a little bit better what we got and we can kind of trim it back a little bit and make it a little smoother and more realistic. So now that we have our main selection, let's go ahead and zoom out to see what we got. Perfect. So now that I have my selection, I'm going to copy and I'm going to bring it over to my new photo. I'm going to paste. I'm going to go ahead and make her, of course, much smaller. I'm going to find our transform and controls, hold down shift and make her smaller. And we may need to zoom out to do this, so I'm going to zoom out to 50%. And I can kind of see my controls a little bit better. So we've got to get the size right. And the great thing about the hair is I'm actually going to have her kind of coming to the right. So the hair actually doesn't even matter in this case. Uh, but we can always go in with, um, I'm going to show you for an example just so you can see how to do this if your photo is not as generous as mine. Um, so we can just take the eraser tool and it's just like a brush. Let me do the eraser tool and I'm going to do a feathered brush selection which you can tell it's feathered that by uh, seeing the feathered uh, brush selection and I'm selecting my layer and just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Just cleaning up and I can go in with more detail maybe a smaller brush, just cleaning up the mess, making it more smooth. And I can go around and I can spend a good 30 minutes cutting this out perfectly, but for what we need, let's go ahead and zoom out and see how our photo looks on our background. Let's do a little bit more so I can get the overall composition how I want it. So let's kind of tuck her to the right a little bit. I kind of like her size because there's a nice, there's just bigger here and the background seems so distant, so far away. And we could do some things here in a moment to kind of match the color. So the light is coming down here. So we need to try to match these two color pieces. So let's edit the colors on both of these. One way we could do that is edit them individually to, until they match. Or double click on this uh, background layer, we can actually merge the two layers together. So let me zoom in a little bit so we can see what this looks like. 
So I'm going to highlight my bottom layer and then I'm going to highlight my uh, the girl on the top. And I'm going to select both of them by holding down shift and clicking on the one that's not selected. So I have both of them selected and I'm actually going to merge the layers. So if you right click, you can actually see the options. Some of my options are going off the screen. Click on merge layers. So right click merge layers. And so now they're one unit again. So if I want to do, if I feel like the overall composition is how I want it, once your layers are locked, they're locked. So what I recommend is before you merge your layers to save a separate Photoshop file. If you ever needed to have this isolated cutout image uh, for something else, you can have this cut out. Once you merge those layers, you can't go back. So merge the layers. Now they're one together image. So now I can do some of my image adjustments, kind of what we did earlier. And I can kind of, if you do them both together, they adopt some of the same characteristics. So now that they're one image, they can be manipulated together. So they look like they belong together a little bit. Uh, vibrance, just kind of messing around with some options. Saturation, desaturate it and really make it look like they belong together. You don't have to worry about color matching, but I like a little bit of color in this beautiful photo. And we could do, let's see, shadows and highlights. I hate how it defaults to some pretty wacky settings. Uh, I'm not going to mess with that too much, but let me do hmm, exposure. Exposure is another one I use a lot. So just kind of increasing. That might be too much exposure. Uh, we'll settle right about there. You can see how it, it does. You could probably finesse this a little bit more, but it does look like these two belong together. So just kind of an introduction to cutting using the lasso tool. And uh, I'm just going to go back and kind of fine tune, just taking my brush tool or my eraser tool, I'm sorry. And then um, I, have, I have it on the feathered brush. And I'm just going to, oh, I no longer have it separated anymore. Ah, so before you merge them together, make sure you are happy with the overall composition. I was going to go and smooth this out a little bit, uh, but I can always go back before I merge my layers in my history, and uh, now I have my individual layer. So make sure your composition and everything is cut out exactly how you want before you commit to merging layers, and then you can go ahead and, and, and do some of the same stuff. Or you can edit if we go back, and let's say we forget we did the merge layers, I can individually edit these to make a match. This is a little bit more difficult, and I can still remain control over having this separate layer. So let's do a Photoshop manipulation. I'm going to take this red-headed girl and turn it into black hair. So there's a couple ways we can do this, and one way, if I didn't have such a complicated background, you can actually go to image and there's something called this is image adjustments uh, we're going to go down to selective color you can actually take if let's say she's a redhead red is going to be very dominant in our hair color so you could actually go and select the red color and be able to edit it that way and kind of change the tone and the vibrance of her red hair maybe even try to make it a different color but there's a little bit of a problem to this is her skin tone is very close to the hair color as well. So there's a lot of red in her freckles and a lot of red in her hair. So when I adjust the hair, everything else is going to adjust as well. So that's not going to give me the desired effect because I really don't want to wash out these colors. I want to keep her face the same color, but just change her hair color to black. So I could simply do that, but everything else changes. So that's, this is very handy, but for, and for this case, we're going to do it a little bit differently. So I have my layer over here. I'm actually going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to click on it and then duplicate layer. So now I have two layers. And so what I want to do is I want to take this top layer and I want to delete everything but the hair. I just want the hair available so that I can be able to isolate the hair and, and change the color without changing the color on her face and body as well. So I'm going to actually do that by using the eraser tool. So I have the eraser tool selected, and I'm just going to use it. I'm going to select a brush. It's 
Let's make it a little bit smaller at first and then I can get a little bit bigger. So now that I have my brush selected, my eraser tool, I have both of these layers on, the visibility on. I actually want to take the lower layer and actually turn the visibility off so that when I delete stuff from this layer, I can see what I'm deleting. So that's a little trick there. Don't forget to do that. So now that I have the eraser tool, let's go ahead and delete everything but the hair on this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete. I have a pretty big brush, so I can go back and do some details later. Let me select a little bit of a smaller brush so I can kind of select this out a little better. And you can also zoom in if you if you had a lot of time, zoom in. You don't have to be exact, but uh, the more precise you are, the better result you'll get. But there's ways to kind of go back and edit if you if you messed up a little bit or you maybe covered a portion you didn't want to cover, you can always go back and edit this. So I'm just kind of doing a really rough cutout of what I think where the, this is a really difficult one. So I'm kind of doing a difficult photo manipulation here when you're just learning, but uh, better to start with something difficult than everything else will seem easy. This is because of that grass. That grass is hard. Usually you have kind of a single tone sky that kind of helps you cut out a lot better than this grass. Okay, so now that I've kind of have some the details cut out, let me go back and cut a little bit of that out. Let me uh, get a bigger brush and now I can get all the rest. Ooh, that might be too big. And the type of brush I'm selecting is a feathered brush, which you can select in the default brushes. This is a, a straight edge brush and this is kind of a feathered brush. So I feel like feathering kind of gives me a little more uh, flexibility and grace when I'm trying to cut things out. Let me do it a little bit bigger, so kind of speed up the process here. Do, 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 just erasing everything but the hair. And I can always go back and erase the rest of this later because this is, I'm really just trying to grab the hair. Do, 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 do. And let me drag this over and see if I can't get some of this out as well. Go back and make the brush smaller. Do a little bit around here, just getting the hair. Perfect. Well, one more step, do it a little bigger. There we go. I feel like, oops, did a little too much there. Okay, so I feel like I isolated the hair pretty good just for this example. I can go back and do all that later. Okay, so I got the hair out. So let's go ahead and uh, make our lower level visible again. So now, as you can see, we have the hair isolated on its own layer. So now we could go ahead and edit this layer. So I want to make it black hair. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my hair layer and just desaturate it. So it's going to take all the color out. And we can uh, go ahead and if we see other areas that we didn't delete. We can delete those. That's fine. And there's a little red here. We can go back in and edit that um, a little bit later. Okay, so I'm actually going to go in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to fine tune this layer. I'm going to delete, make it a smaller brush. And I'm just going to delete little areas of the skin that we don't want to make black. So those are just areas of the skin that that brush was kind of big, so it kind of brushed more than we wanted. So going back in and editing a little bit. Okay, great. So let's zoom out. And let's see how we can make this hair look a little bit more realistic. So what I want to do is you rarely see a redhead with freckles and black hair. So I'm going to go actually go to my base layer and uh, do some adjustments. So let's do uh, something called selective color. So adjustments, selective color. And I'm going to take the reds, all these reds and freckles, and I'm going to try to uh, reduce that just a little bit. So I'm going to go down to the black and just kind of reduce the black. You notice how there's fading a little bit. You don't want to do it too much because then she starts to look like a, a ghost. But just enough to kind of bring a little bit of that redness down. I bring a little yellow in there. Just kind of adjust this so we're bringing a little bit less red. Okay, let's do yellows. There we go. Just doing some adjustments. Okay. Click OK. Go back in our history to see if we like the changes. 
Okay, great. So let's do some hair. This looks almost look like gray hair and not black hair. Let's do brightness and contrast. We're just doing some adjustments. And maybe reduce the brightness a little bit and maybe increase the contrast. There we go. That's looking a little better, taking a lot of those highlights out of there because those almost look like gray hairs if you have a lot of highlights and black hair. Let's do exposure. So yeah, we don't want to bring out and reduce the shadows. So let's go and do shadow and highlights and see what we could do about these shadows. Ooh, there we go. This is just where you're just going to experiment and have fun. Figure out what looks better. I'm trying to reduce the highlights here. And the shadow and highlight options seem to have the most effect. So that's almost too much. I want some highlights. Okay, great. And I also see there's a little bit of red left over from where I didn't cut it out perfectly. So I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to take the saturation tool, which is going to be down here in your toolbar. It's usually on Dodge, but just go down. It's this little, it's actually called the sponge tool. But there's an option up here where you can set it on desaturate. And I'm just going to go onto my main layer where that red is still remaining and just kind of brush over it. I'm desaturating it just a little bit so you don't see the red. And you could just kind of do that throughout the piece. Do it a little bit. Oops, didn't mean to do it quite over there as much. Maybe a little bit there. Any traces of the red hair. And this is where we can get really detailed and you could spend an hour probably messing around with this. Or I could have just spent a little extra time and cut it out a little bit better. I'm just desaturating that area just enough so you don't see the red right as much. There's a lot of different ways to do this method. You don't have to use this method. This is just what I would do if I was trying to change your hair color dramatically like we did. That was a pretty dramatic change. And to try to make it look realistic, it is a challenge. And you could do selective color up here, an image, if you wanted to uh, do it with uh, someone who had a different skin tone than their hair color. But in this case, she had the same uh, reds in both her skin and her hair. So we kind of had to do this method to make it work. So there's kind of a simple, quick, we did this in what, about five minutes? Kind of changing your hair. We can actually do a couple little adjustments to the main base photo to her face. See if we can't um, kind of mess around with the color balance. See if we can find something that's going to work a little better with black hair. Yeah. That looks kind of neat. Kind of taking more of the red out. I don't want her to look too glum. So that could work. That looks a little bit more realistic with the cooler tones and the black hair. And so this is the original. And this is what we ended up with. So kind of doing some black hair. There's little things that I would go back and do her freckles with. Actually, there's a few things I can erase right here on this layer. And fine tune it. And there we go. So now we're going to work on manipulating a person shot. And so I have a, a picture I downloaded online and we're going to kind of fine tune a few things on her skin and also make some um, manipulation adjustments to certain parts of her face. Um, if that's something a client requests and they do often. So you'll now know how, know how to do it. So we're going to go ahead and unlock our layer. I just opened the photograph and there's a couple tricks that I can do. Uh, to kind of even out her skin tone and to remove any kind of unwanted little uh, skin marks. Uh, so one of the things I like to use is the clone tool. So it's called the clone stamp tool. So go ahead and highlight that. And I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller of a brush size. And I want to make sure it's going to cover up just that little point. So I'm going to make the brush size a little bit bigger than the actual mark. And here's how the clone stamp works. You're going to hold down the option key. And if you're on a Windows, I believe it's the control key. But on a Mac, it's the hold down the option key. And I'm going to be able to take a sample. I uh, just click my mouse once wherever I want to take a, a kind of a color sample. 
um, I'm going to take something really close to the skin next to it just to get the right shade and the tone of that uh, particular area. So I'm going to click right next to it and now I have the clone stamp tool. So if I go over here and I go ahead and uh, click my mouse and hold and I kind of paint, it actually paints clones from that area. So you can actually paint from that whole side. And what's great is I release my mouse and I can do it again. And it'll continue to do that until I take a new sample. So if I hold down Option or Control and I sample her eye, I can come up over here and, and paint an eye. And I can come back, take another sample of the other eye, and paint an eye. So that's kind of just really quickly how the clone tool works. So I'm going to go back in my history to where we were, and I'm going to go ahead and take a sample. So I'm going to take a sample here. And what's great about covering up a small mark on the face, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Uh, so I took my sample, and I just click once, and it usually covers up nicely. Or sometimes you click again, and you're good. So you can see how that blemish just disappeared. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Hold down, and I'll take a sample nearby, maybe right here, and pop it over there. I'm going to continue to do the same thing. I want to take this lighter, see how her, her skin's more red here. Her skin's more peachy color here. So I'm actually going to click and cover it up, cover it up that way. You can do the same thing with blemishes right here and cover it up. And so that works for really small blemishes. Uh, but there's times if you have to cover up large, maybe a large scar or something else that needs to be touched up, uh, sometimes the clone tool doesn't do the right job. And so you'll need to actually take the brush tool and paint um, some skin tone on it. So we're going to do that in the next video. So let's say we need to smooth out uh, kind of this redness and freckles on our nose. Um, and so one way to do that, you can't really clone um, anything around it because this is exactly the area that we want to change. Um, so what I'd like to do is take the eyedropper tool, which is going to be right here in your toolbar, and I'm going to sample, uh, you can sample any color, and it'll pop out up here and it'll pop out here in your swatch panel. Um, you can sample any, sample lip color. I'm going to sample a color that I think will go good on her nose. So it's probably going to be in this area right here. I'm going to try not to select a hair. So maybe right here, and you click a couple times, double click your swatch to see if that's a color you think would be a nice skin tone. And I'm going to create a new layer. And this is where I'm actually going to paint on kind of a new skin color for her on her nose. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the brush tool. And I'm going to make sure it's the right size. I always use feather brushes for a lot of my work. I rarely use the, um, the straight edge brush. So you'll see me use that all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I'm on a new layer. I'm going to be painting over her nose. And it looks a little crazy right now, but we're going to end up deleting and erasing a lot of this. Okay. And I'm also going to create a new, I like to create new layers for each section of skin. I do this just so I can have control over deleting and, and doing some adjustments. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool and then I'm going to select some skin that I think is a nice even skin tone. So this is the tricky part. So maybe right here and I'm going to go back and I'm just going to paint. I'm going to do the same. That might be a little dark. So let me go back and grab a new sample. Maybe right here and then I'm going to paint. I'm on a new layer. And notice how the, uh, the light is coming on to the right. I'm actually going to create a new layer. So to do her right cheek, I'm going to take a new sample and do the same thing because this is going to be a much brighter, lighter color than on this side where there's shade or shadow on her face. Okay, so you do the same thing on a new layer. Just kind of paint, paint around. So this looks a little ridiculous right now, but we're going to end up kind of um, screening a lot of this back. So I'm going to start with the nose layer and I'm going to uh, reduce the opacity on it until I'm happy with kind of how it's blending in. So right about there and I'm going to take the eraser tool, make it kind of a decent size so the feather has a nice feathering. But I want to keep the shadow. So there we go. Do the same thing on this side, reduce the opacity. And I'm going to go back with the eraser tool and just kind of go back. So now this is the darker, the shadow side. 
I'm going to reduce the opacity first. We're just really smoothing out her skin. We're not really changing her skin or eliminating all. You want her to look realistic. Um, so let's go ahead and zoom out and kind of see what we did here. Let's see if I do 70%. Um, so let's go ahead and take out all of these layers. So this is before. And this is after. So you can kind of see how the nose looks a little better. It's less red. And I would even reduce the opacity even more because you really want to keep some of the things underneath. You want to have some freckling. You want to have some realism. So this is really just kind of a subtle smoothing out the skin. You're not changing the skin. So there it is. Let me take away all the layers so you can see. So before, after, and this may need some adjustment. May need to erase a little bit on this side. Oops, not that much. I want to have a little bit of that shadow there. This just takes time and practice to master. I could do the same thing for the chin. Around her lips needs a little bit of work. Um, so that's it for evening out skin tone. So now that we've kind of evened out our skin tone a little bit, I want to kind of add a little bit of more of a dynamic eye and some more highlights and shadows just to kind of bring out um, some of that with her. So I'm going to go over to the Dodge and Burn tool, which could be right down here. It's already highlighted. So Dodge and Burn, and I use these quite a bit. Um, the Dodge tool is when you want to add highlights to any object, and the Burn tool is if you want to add shadows to any object. So I want to bring out highlights in her eyes. So let's do the Dodge tool. And I'm going to set it on highlights. You can actually go up here. Make sure you uh, adjust the range if you're not getting anything you like. Go back and uh, uh, play around with highlights and shadows. Uh, different options um, to figure that out. I like highlights. That's going to be more dramatic. Let's try 100% exposure. Of course, we can always go back and reduce that exposure if it's too harsh or too too bright. So let's go ahead and zoom in on our eye a little bit. And we're just going to brush it on. It's just like a brush with a lot of things in Photoshop and the tools. So brush it on. It's going around her eye and it's bringing out highlights in the little areas right there. So you notice how her eye is much more dynamic. And you can overdo this for sure. So if I went back and did it again, it starts to look almost alien-esque. So let's just um, go ahead and do that. So that's perfect. That's all we really need to do. We need to add a little bit of the burn tool. This is going to add shadows. So if I go like along here, it's going to actually add shadows. And a lot of times I like to do um, eyebrows and maybe even bringing out a little bit of the eyelashes, just a little bit deeper, darker, fuller looking eyelashes. I really don't use this too much, um, just to kind of bring in shadows. Maybe uh, let me go down to highlights. Just experiment to see. I always uh, do my Control Z, which is to go back a step with my keyboard. If I go and I don't like how it looks, I can just do Control Z, and I can continue to do that. So you can see how you can bring out um, kind of some dramatic effects with this. Let me actually do shadows. Let me bring down the exposure. I don't want, I want it to be very subtle. Just a little darker, just to kind of make her lips look a little more lively. That's all we're doing. We're not doing anything um, outside of that. And we probably even could have backed off doing the eyes a little bit more. Um, but you see that made a, a pretty big look. Let me, this is the original. So I'm already kind of seeing when, th this is very wise to do. Always go back to your original, which is all the way at the top here in your history, and then go back to new and switch back between them. And what I'm finding out is I'm not liking how the cheeks, how I evened out the cheeks. I'm not liking that at all. I kind of like the more natural look, so that's no problem. I have these in different layers. I'm gonna take out the cheeks. I like the nose, so let's just take out the two cheeks or maybe reduce the opacity a lot on those instead of making them disappear altogether. So now when I go back to the original, a little bit better, let's actually uh, reduce it on our nose, make those all more subtle. And so now we're going to actually use the liquify tool.
So the liquify tool is probably what you most associate with photo manipulation. Whenever you see a magazine, when people complain that they made the models too skinny, they're probably using this liquify tool. So we're going to try to find ways to use it um, and not do it so dramatic where people look un uh, she looks unrealistic and we're changing her face. We're just going to take in her nose just a little bit. She's already a really beautiful girl, but we're just going to do some tweaks to just kind of show you the power of this tool and what you can kind of do with it. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and select my main base layer, which is the, this photo here. And I have some separate layers here. You know, we did kind of some smoothing. I'm going to go ahead and merge all the layers. So when we use the liquify tool, it's going to um, do it on one layer instead of not doing it on these other layers. So I'm going to right click and I'm merging the layers. So now they're all going to be one, one unit now. Once you merge layers, it's done. You can't unmerge unless you go back in your history. So now I'm ready for the liquify tool. Um, so we're going to go ahead and select our layer, go to filter, and liquify is going to be down here in your filter panel. So go ahead and click on liquify, and it's going to bring it to a new menu option here. It's going to give you a new screen. And let me see if I can collapse this so it's all on the screen here that you can see. Okay, so here's kind of the basics of how it's work, how it works. Uh, this is called the um, the forward warp tool, and you can change the size of your brush. So you can make it a really big brush, or make it a little brush. So the bigger the brush, the more of the area it's going to affect. So let me kind of do an example so you can kind of see. I'm just pressing and holding the mouse button and dragging. So that looks a little weird, but watch what I can do with the nose. I can actually click and go to the right, click, go to the left, and I'm slowly um, changing her nose. You can actually make it skinnier. You could do this to make arms skinnier, legs skinnier. They could do people, uh, certain components bigger. Uh, we could change where the eye shifts around. You can actually use this to make neck skinnier. You gotta be very careful with this. You don't wanna do it too much. So I kind of changed her nose a little bit just by sucking it in. And there's some other tools you can mess with here. There's like a spin tool. You can actually warp it that way. Uh, this is There's a pucker and bloat tool. So this is going to be pucker. Let's do this a little bit bigger. So pucker, the click and hold. It can actually make lips bigger and more full. Um, this is going to be, there's pucker and then bloat. I think that was bloat where it made it a little bit bigger. So if I want to make her lips skinnier. So I'm actually going to cancel because um, I don't like, I was just doing some examples. So let's try that again. Let's go back to filter and liquify. Now we're back to where we were. And let me zoom in just a little bit. Well, actually, I don't want to zoom in because I'm going to be changing some things. So there's a, a really neat uh, kind of automatic setting. If you go down here to Face Tool, and you may not see this in your version of Photoshop. If you have Adobe Photoshop Cloud, then you will have it because your Photoshop will, you have free updates. So you should have this if you if you have the Creative Cloud. Um, so this is an amazing tool. It's automatically going to sense where eyes are, where the nose, the lips, and the outside of the face is going to be. And in some cases, it can even do the hair. So you can go around here and adjust them manually. Um, if you ever played an online uh, game where you had to create your character, you'll you'll be right at home here. You can change your mouth width, height doing that, or you can do it manually. By going here in the nose and pulling down, you can make the nose a little longer. You can make it skinnier. Do the eyes and make them squint down a little bit more. And this is where you have to be careful because you're going to change. You could change this person too much, so I can make her a lot skinnier, right? Make it a little bit bigger, can make it a little skinnier. All right, so uh, I don't like that too much, so I'm going to uh, do some manual updates here on the right. So I'm going to nose, nose width, I want to make it skinnier. Perfect. So I just did, did some subtle things. Let's see what we could do with the hair here if it gives us any uh, face shape. So forehead. Let's increase the forehead or decrease it. Bring up her chin, bring it down, make her face longer. Jawline. So there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. 
can kind of see our changes that we did. If I go back in my history one step, before, after, before, after. Let's just zoom in a little bit more on her face. So I feel like I'm kind of done for the moment. I can actually go in and add some more highlights, bring out some of the highlights in her hair. That's probably something I would do uh, by using the uh, dodge tool. So I can actually select the dodge tool here again, make a nice big brush. I'm on highlights and I'm going to reduce the exposure so it's not going to be too strong. And sometimes even going splitting the difference and doing mid-tones helps. So just play around with the settings. Make your brush bigger. Okay, so let's see if I can uh, bring out some highlights in her hair. Let's see how this is kind of making it nice. Pop out a little bit. See how it's really kind of bringing her hair to life, isn't it? Um, I can even do the same thing with her lips. There we go. So let's go ahead and look at the before. This is when we first opened up the document. This is how it was. Let's go ahead and see kind of some of the stuff we did. We spent, what, about seven or eight minutes kind of doing some adjustments. So now if we go ahead and zoom out, this is some small retouching. Um, I probably wouldn't have done as much nose work. I would probably keep that because I think you want to keep the people, uh, the person's original characteristics. That's what makes everybody unique. But just kind of going through some tools to kind of show you the potential of what you can do in Photoshop. And that Liquify tool is so powerful. So please go explore, see what kind of things that you can create with it. So we're going to practice our blending modes and some paintbrush uh, tool today. We're going to make this green, kind of brownish eye. We're going to turn this into a blue eye. So there's a couple ways we can tackle this. Uh, we could always take our magnetic lasso tool and kind of let it kind of select itself as we move the mouse around. And the only bad thing about using this is it doesn't, it's not cutting it out perfectly. You have to go in there and uh, do it a little bit better. So I would, uh, what I would do if I did this method is I would copy my selection and then paste it on top. So now I have a separate eye layer. Let me unselect this. And then I would actually change the color. I would maybe desaturate and then I would add some color back in by adding a little bit of color balance. And just kind of see my process of what I would do. Uh, but the, here's the problem with using this method. As I'm changing the uh, adjustment so much on this layer, and even if I reduce the opacity a little bit on my eye layer, make it look a little more natural, you'll see this kind of, it's not blending in very well. I could always take my eraser tool and go back, kind of smooth it out a little bit, make it look more realistic turn up my opacity all the way for my eraser tool. Make, make it little, look a little more realistic. But uh, an even better way to do all this, I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer. I'm actually going to create a new layer. So I just create a new layer here. And I'm going to take the paint brush tool. I'm literally going to paint a blue eye. So I'm taking the brush tool. And you'll notice I have it on a nice feather, a feather brush right here. And let me get the right size. A little bit bigger makes the feather more dramatic, which I like. So I'm going to paint a blue colored eye. So now it's, the trick is picking um, a realistic looking blue. We can always go in and change that. So let me make sure I have everything. Oh, my opacity is on 16. I need to change that to 100%. So I want it to be very visible. Doesn't have to be exact. We can always go back with the eraser tool and fine tune our selection or where we're painting. So just kind of a rough, rough cutout. So I'm going to go back and take the eraser tool now. It works just like a brush. And I'm just going back and kind of trimming it just a little bit. We don't want any blue to bleed into the areas where we don't need blue. So this looks ridiculous, but this is the power of blending modes. I'm actually going to put it on a color blending mode. 
I'm just off the screen now, but I'll show you in another pop out to the left of your screen. So I'm going to select color and look at that. Look how that, uh, that little painted brush now has a transparency, which that's all blending modes are, are transparencies. Just putting it on color really made a nice dramatic pop. So let's continue to trim. Uh, let's take our eraser tool. There's a little bit too much on the outside. Let's go back on this right side. So that looks a little more natural than the other way I started off with. I want to show you both me methods because there's many ways to tackle this same uh, modification. And, and there's not always a, a right way. There's sometimes ways that look better. Um, and so that's kind of a little bit, uh, it's all the same color and no one's eye is all just straight blue. Sometimes there's a little bit of brown or green inside this ring of the eye. So we're going to create a new layer and we're going to paint again. And we're going to add a little bit of brown. Let's find a kind of a nice brown color. So now that I have my brown color selected um, and I have my new layer, I'm going to go ahead and start painting my brown. Let's make it a bigger brush. Let's go all the way around the eye just like this. And it's got a much bigger feather because, or a much bigger size because the feathering is more dramatic on the bigger brush sizes. And that's what we want. We want to have a nice subtle transition. So I'm going to do the same thing with this layer that I did with the blue and I'm going to put it on a blending mode of color, color blending mode. So that's nice. So what I want to do is go back and adjust the color of my blue eye just a little bit. I want to tone down the blue and bring in a little bit more green because no one's eye is that vivid blue. I'm just doing some adjustments and it might even help if I um, made the top layer uh, kind of disappear there uh, from visibility and now I have the blue eye underneath so now I can make some adjustments. Let's see if I go to hue saturation. Let's see if that'll help me here with my eye. Kind of reduce the saturation just a little bit. I mean, that's going to look a lot more realistic. It has a little more gray in there. Let's add back our brown ring. So no one has an eye that has a transition that harsh. So let's actually take our eraser tool and let's see what we could do to maybe like erase certain portions of it to make it look like it's you kind of see this is the effect you see in people that have blue not all the way blue eyes they have like a little bit of brown maybe in the middle and I might need to uh, go back and increase my brush size a little bit this is just tricky I'm trying to get this effect to work and I might even need to try different sizes, do like a small size that comes in. Oops. Let me go back one and step. There we go. So I actually want to maybe reduce the opacity on this brown portion of the eye, make it blend in a little bit. Well, I don't like that. Kind of come in. I like the vibrance there, but I want it to blend in more naturally. So let me see if I could take this. I'm selecting the brown layer, and I wonder if I can blur it a little bit. So I'm going to go down to the uh, filter, blur, and there's something called Gauss and blur. And so this evenly blurs uh, a certain layer or object. So this is not giving me a preview, so I'm just going to kind of click on a random point and see if I like how much it blurs it. So let me see if I need to go back in. Blur, Gaussian blur. Let's do quite a bit more. There we go. It's blending really nicely, but I think I need to go back and blur it a little less. So Gaussian blur, maybe kind of in between those first two selections. There we go. And so let me see if I can go back to, I'm going to hue and saturate, or I'm sorry, color balance. Kind of checking out, see if I can modify the color just a tad. Trying to make this as realistic as possible.
There we go. And maybe reduce the opacity. All these little things. It's just experiments to see if I like it or not. Uh, there's not really an exact science. So that's one way to do the eye. Maybe I can um, go back and adjust the blue part of the eye again. See if there's anything I can mess around with. We'll do vibrance. That looks more realistic when I add uh, reduce the vibrance. Saturation. There we go. Could probably even take the eraser tool and mess with the eye a little bit more. Maybe just make it a little ring instead of such a large ring. Let's see if I can do the blur again. Just want it to blend in a little more evenly. Let's blur even more. Oop, that's a little too much. There's the preview showing up right here. There we go. So I can I'm gonna see what I think would look good. I'm going to take my eraser tool. I don't want any of the colors from any of these layers to show up on the black. I'm just kind of erasing in that area. And I can actually go back on this blue layer. I'm just going to clean up this. I see a little bit of blue that got onto the white part of the eye. And there we go. We changed an eye color. I think that looks pretty good. Oops. Go back here. I can always fine tune kind of how this eye does the pattern there. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And then zoom out. And have our eye there. So let's create a real practical project. So we're going to create a Facebook post that's going to be the most attention grabbing post we can come up with because that's what matters in social media is grabbing people in your newsfeed. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a standard Facebook document size. Uh, it's 1200. Let's do 1200 by 628. Um, and let's go ahead and do a resolution of 300 because usually you would do 72 for digital but it's always better to do higher resolution because you can always downsize later. So here's kind of our Facebook post size. And actually, let me go to, this would be good practice. Let me go to image size and make sure I have the right settings. And if you don't, you can always go to image size and change it. And I believe I'm correct, 1200 by 628 is the Facebook size. So if you ever needed to noodle around, Let's go ahead and go to image and the image size before you start working. So let me just unlock my background layer and let's go ahead and get started with something. So we need like a really attention grabbing color. So let's go ahead and go to our gradient tool and let's grab like the most attention grabbing color we can find. I know red, that stops everyone's attention on social media. So let's do like a red gradient. This is just one I found, but you can always just to create your own gradient or just create two um, swatches and have like a light color and a dark color. You don't have to have all these small transitions between if you don't want to. So this is a simple gradient. I'll just do it on our base layer and let's just have a nice gradient. And what I like to do when you have square or rectangle ads is to add angles to your design. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to kind of just draw and I'm just taking the polygon lasso tool right now and I'm just creating a simple triangle shape and I'm going to close up my shape. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to add another really crazy grab your attention color. Let's do this green. I think that green and red, yes, you can't get any more attention grabbing than that. And I want to add a complementary um, angle on the other side. So I'm going to go to image. And I want to actually go to, oh, I'm sorry, layer. I'm going to duplicate the layer. So I'm just going to duplicate the layer. So now I have two layers. I'm just going to drag. And uh, let's see if I can uh, just rotate this. and got the corner and I can rotate it really easily. 
see if they match up just kind of you could do this by uh, transforming it 180 degrees but I'm just doing it manually because I'm stubborn okay cool so let's get some type so I'm gonna go ahead and click on my uh, type tool and I'm just gonna type in bold ads get noticed just kind of a generic headline let's find a nice font because I don't like whatever that is let's do railway but let's do bold uh, let's do a different weight the the thickest weight that railway has is black so let's do black and I like how this is all caps and this is not all caps so that it has a nice balance but we need to balance the size so I'm just going to reduce the size of the, t uh, the text here and you can reduce it right up here in this area but I'm just doing a little keyboard shortcut here and look at the letting the letting has a very large gap so we can change that in our paragraph settings and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more on my ad so you can kind of see more what's going on let me take this into a new window perfect so let's reduce the letting I'm going to go to my uh, character and paragraph settings and I believe it's in your character there it is right here um, so let's reduce the spacing to maybe 30 maybe uh, do 28 I'm just typing it in till I get the letting that I like and we need to have some balance even more so let's reduce the weight on this bottom text the, the most important thing is the word bold here that's what's going to grab you then you'll read ad, ads get noticed so let's go ahead and reduce the weight to maybe even light and maybe even light italic so we're even changing up uh, making it italic and then we have non italic and then we have all caps and then we don't have all caps so as much uh, variety as you can think of so I also want to angle my text to match the angle that I created here because I think that has a nice look and it's uh, very different not a lot of people do angled text so once again that's going to be attention grabbing I might want to um, change my angle just ever so slightly I don't want the angle to be too angled if that makes any sense so I'm just going to change my little triangles here expand them out make sure this matches I'm just changing that perfect so I think this has a nice layout I want to have a nice photo a really tension grabbing photo here so I'm going to kind of reduce my text a little bit maybe right there I can always adjust that later I also want to add a drop shadow to my text so I just have my layer styles which I double click right here in this area bring up my layer styles do a drop shadow and let's do one that has black a black dark shadow or drop shadow and let's just kind of mess with the settings there we go I don't want it blurred too much I really want people to see the, the drop shadow and reduce the opacity okay so let's reduce the text a little bit more so I think we have a great basic layout we can always adjust a little bit layer uh, later like maybe move the text down here to give more, more room for our photo um, so now I'm gonna go find a photo online that I think will match with this overall concept and I'll be right back so I was able to find this photo on Pexels P-E-X-E-L-S is where I find a lot of my free stock photography and I found this photo I thought that would go perfect with kind of the colors and the attention grabbing theme I have for this ad so this is super high resolution so when I drag it into my much smaller web ad it's going to be so huge so I'm dragging it in it's it's huge so I'm actually going to do a little trick let me delete that I'm just going to reduce the image size on this so I'm just going to go to image image size I'm just going to reduce this down to a thousand pixels or actually let me make it a little bit bigger mm, 1500 pixels that's fine now when I drag it in it won't be so atrociously big so here's kind of our photo and we're going to mess around with blending modes a little bit to see how we can best get this photo so I'm going to go in my layers and I'm not going to drag this little boy I'm going to drag him um, below my little triangle angles here so he's you can see the triangles pop out so he's kind of all the way down at the bottom here and I want kind of this uh, this to kind of pop out I want it to have a little bit of color so I'm actually um, I have this red I want to show underneath so I'm going to select my photo above it 
And I'm going to put a blending mode on it so that you can see this, this uh, red gradient down below. So I'm going to try the color. Oh, that doesn't work. The color blending mode doesn't look good. Let's try luminosity. Perfect. So luminosity always is really good for showing a photo through as we tried earlier in the video in another lesson. So I think that looks great. So let's get our overall composition. I'm going to zoom out. And it really helps to zoom out on the piece. So you can kind of take a look at the overall size and balance to see if you like it. You make the kid just a little bit smaller. Try to get the right size in here. Perfect. I want people to be able to see the hands. They can see the full expression of this kid. Perfect. So we can tweak. I don't really like how um, he looks angry because of the red. So that's no problem. I'm going to go back. And I already have this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reduce the visibility here so you can kind of see our gradient. This is what we're going to go and edit real quick. So I have our gradient selected. I'm just going to go to Image, Adjustments, and go to Color Balance and tweak that red and maybe make it a little more purple. I don't want it to be red, angry. I just want it to be attention grabbing. So I'm just bringing out some purple. Ooh, that's really cool. I love that. That really kind of reduces the anger a little bit. And I kind of want to sharpen the photo because I really want it to be intense. So let me select the boy, and I'm actually going to go to Filter, let me see where sharpen. There it is, down to sharpen. And I'm going to do sharpen more. So this is going to sharpen the photo twice as much as just this regular sharpen will. So I'm going to do sharpen more. So that adds a little bit of sharpness to that photo, which I think works really well. And so another kind of cool thing you could do is layering. So what I'd like to do is have this D tuck behind this boy's ear. So it almost looks like the boy's head is above the text while his fingers remain behind the text. So it almost looks like he's interacting with the text. So a way to do that is I'm going to need to duplicate uh, the boy's photo. So I'm just going to go to Layer, Duplicate. And so I now have two copies. So I'm going to take the, the top copy and I'm going to bring it all the way to the top. So now you can see it um, above everything. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to cut out the portion that overlaps this D. Uh, so I've got to, I can use the magnetic lasso tool to cut that out. Let's kind of just cut this little section. Maybe include a little bit of the hair. So I don't need to grab all of him. I just need to grab what's going to go above the D. And so now I'm going to actually copy my selection. I'm going to make sure this very top layer is selected. I'm just going to copy and then paste right where it is. So you can see that new uh, portion we just copied and pasted. We no longer need this copy of the layer because we already grabbed that ear sample that we needed. So let's go ahead and delete that so we don't get confused. And so now what we need to do is go ahead and take our layer and apply. Let me drag it back down. It needs to remain above the text. So right now if I drag it below the text, there's no point in having it because I really want this to be uh, above the text. But we need to be able to apply the same filter effect that we have here, or the blending mode. So right now this is set on luminosity. So let's see what happens if we set the ear on luminosity. If you'll notice right here, it's kind of messing up when it, because it's doing a blending mode over this D as well. So we're going to be able to address this in the next video. Okay, so how to kind of um, get past, you're going to run into these issues when you use blending modes, when you have lots of different layers and you're trying to accomplish all these things. Blending modes don't always act right when you have all these different layers and you want things to overlap. So we're going to try something a little different. So I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to change this original. This is, I'm just toggling the visibility. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to keep my ear, I'm going to keep the boy, but I'm just changing the blending mode on the, our main base layer of this boy. And, and I'm not going to put any blending mode on. I'm just going to make it normal. And I'm going to go back on my ear that I, that I have cut out here. And I'm also going to do the same. There's no blending modes. All, everything's back to normal. 
So that has the effect that I like, but I really miss having that gradient, that cool gradient effect that the blending mode afforded us. So I'm actually gonna uh, do something a little different. I'm taking the gradient la layer, layer that I had at the bottom here, and I'm dragging it to the very top. And I'm actually gonna do a blending mode as the top layer. So it's gonna actually, instead of being the bottom layer, it's actually gonna be on the top layer, and then I'm gonna set a blending mode on here. So I'm just uh, messing around with some blending mode options. Color, ooh, that's perfect. So that's giving me the same effect I need, but it's at the very top of the top of the stack here. So that's the difference. So it could be at the bottom here or the top, but I, it needs to be on the top to, to show through. So I'm losing my little green triangles, but that's no problem because I can always take the polygon lasso tool and just draw these triangles and cut it out. I'm just cutting out the gradient layer right here so I can reveal my uh, green triangles or even better. Uh, so many different ways to skin a cat. I'm going to take my two triangle layers and bring them up above at the very top. So they're above the gradient. So perfect. So let me actually select the ear here and select my boy. So now I have uh, all this selected and I'm going to kind of move this around. Just kind of getting it perfect here. Oops. I may need to lock that gradient layer. So whenever you're trying to manipulate things and, and a layer keeps automatically getting selected by accident and keep shifting it, you could always lock a layer so it doesn't bother you anymore. So now I can kind of select some things. There we go. So what I did is I actually uh, selected the ear and I held down shift and I'm selecting the boy layer. So you can see the two layers that are selected and I'm just shifting it around so that you have just a little overlap. It's not so dramatic. So perfect. So you also notice how the photo ends right here. This is a very small detail that most people don't notice, but designers. And you see how uh, the photo ends here and you're seeing the background of the gradient as kind of this harsh transition. I'm actually gonna take the eraser tool. I'm gonna get a nice feathered brush, uh, not a very big one. And I'm just going to go in and just soften that a little bit. I'm just basically erasing the edge so you don't see the transition. I can even go down here and erase a little if I want to have a little faded in look like that, if that's what I want to go for, which kind of looks cool. Well, I'll go with it, just kind of experimenting and playing around. So now we're just going to finesse a little bit. I'm going to finesse the uh, drop shadow. So I'm going to double click my type layer to get my layer styles panel. I'm going to go back to drop shadow and maybe intensify the drop shadow a little bit, change the distance, the size. There we go. And we can even uh, double click on the text here. I'm just going to highlight this portion. Maybe uh, make it a little bit smaller. So let's do 22. Now I kind of like it big like that, maybe just a little bit smaller. So let's do, this is just very small little adjustments where if you didn't change it, it would probably be just as effective. But as a designer, you just want to fine tune things until you're completely happy with them. Just changing the letting here and my character option. If you don't see that, just go to window and you'll be able to bring up your character and your paragraph options if you don't see that. That's too tight, the spacing. I'm just gonna noodle around with this a little bit and increase the spacing. Maybe 21 is probably perfect. And I also want to uh, take this sentence and close the gap a little there. So I'm just highlighting this sentence and adjusting this ever so slightly. Perfect, I think I'm kind of done noodling around. I can even add a drop shadow to this layer. So I'm just adding a drop shadow. Notice the drop shadow coming down here. It looks really nice. I'm going to extend the distance and the size. So that just adds more to the three, 3D type characteristics that I'm trying to go for here. Doing the same thing to the other triangle shape that we have. 
And let's zoom out a little bit to see our overall composition. I think that's great. If you're scrolling through Facebook right now and this kind of popped up in your feed, I would definitely take notice and check out what the description said and see what the heck this was advertising. So if you're advertising your services as a graphic designer or a designer or a marketer or a virtual assistant, whatever you do, this is the kind of stuff you need to, to be able to create to really grab new clients and get new attention. So now it's time to do an advanced photo manipulation. So this is an example of something I came up with before I taught this lesson. Uh, something I wanted to kind of create with you guys because it uses a wide variety of tools to put together. Um, so this is the original shoe and we're going to take this graphic and pretty much create all of this from scratch by cutting out the shoe. So one of the first things we'll do is this is on a white background and we need to cut this guy out and put it on a new canvas. Um, so there's several ways to cut out. We can use the pen tool to cut around, but that's a little bit more of an advanced technique. So let's do something simple. Let's grab our uh, magic wand tool. Let's go ahead and click on our layer somewhere in the white, and it's going to really, this is a nice even white uh, tone, so I can easily remove a lot of that. So now I'm left with the shadows, which we're going to want to remove uh, the shadows as well. So I'm actually going to take the, probably the lasso tool, and probably do the magnetic lasso tool and see what it can grab. Uh, there might be enough contrast between the shadow and the shoe that it's going to do a nice selection for me. I think the only problem is when we get down here to the shadows, notice how it's not quite grabbing on because that shadow is too close. See there, here's the black and the shadow. That's too close. Actually, it selected it pretty good. Um, so this is where the magnetic lasso tool, when we get that you don't have these high contrast areas. It doesn't like to select what you want to select. I don't think I'm going to take that shoelace, so I'm going to cut that out too. All right, great. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and just fine tune my selection. So I can go back in here. I'm going to hold down shift so I get my addition. I'm going to add to the selection. And I might need to go in and kind of manually um, actually, let me zoom back out and see what my selection is here. Okay, so that's my selection right here. Okay, let me zoom back in. So I'm actually going to be subtracting from the. So if my selection is this kind of area right here, the shadow, if I want to take this out, I'm actually going to want to subtract it from the selection. Um, so let me hold down, let me go up here to the subtract, which is right up here in this that option and now I have see the subtraction sign so now I know it's going to subtract from the selection and it's kind of tricky to master that oops see even there I, I get confused sometimes what is the selection am I adding to it am I subtracting to it I'm going to add I'm actually going to be subtracting that because this is my selection so see how tricky it is so I go back over here and get my quick selection tool and there we go. Let me subtract. And I might need to manually. Ah, oh, that's doing a pretty good selection. That's good enough. We can go back and fine tune with the eraser tool. Uh, I'm going to be subtracting. There we go. Perfect. Go over here, subtracting that little part right here. Go around, make a shape. There we go. And I'm being very picky here. Um, I would usually select it a little bit quicker and then just fine tune it later, but it's good to practice using this tool to cut things out. I'm going to go ahead and switch this from magnetic to polygonal lasso, to lasso tool uh, so I can go ahead and finish cutting out this shape. Great, perfect. Let's go ahead and zoom out, and that should be enough to eliminate the shadow. And a lot of times I'll go up here to select and mask. And I can actually um, increase the smoothness. Let's do the transparency you can cut so you can kind of see what the effect I'm having. So this is our selection. It's a little jagged down here. If you increase the smooth selection, it's actually going to smooth out that selection a little bit. See how it kind of smoothed it? If I bring it all the way, you can really see the effect. 
It just kind of smooths out the jagged edges on the selection. But I'm not going to do it all the way. I'm just going to do a little bit. And adding a little feather helps too, so your selection doesn't seem so harsh. Just adding a little, a little bit of that and clicking OK. So this just takes the selection we made and softens it, adds feathers, feathering to it. So great. So now I'm ready to subtract. Okay. So I'll go back and smooth it out later. So here's my shoe. I'm going to go ahead and create a new canvas. So let me see. I'm going to create, let's do this one. That's perfect. Create. And let me change the dimensions a little bit on it. So I'm just going to go to image size. And I think I want to flip flop these. Actually, let's make it 4,000. Well, that's a little bit too much. Let's do 2,000 by 1,000. Let's do kind of a portrait Facebook type size here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and unlock this layer and I'm just going to make a new layer and go ahead and grab the paint bucket tool and I'm going to do, I'm not going to do a pure black, I'm going to do a very dark gray. So it's going to be right here, not all the way black, just dark gray. And you'll see why we'll do that later. So let's go ahead and fill that layer in. And let's go ahead and lock these layers. That's going to be your base layer. And let's go ahead, I'm just going to bring this into a new window so I can drag this over. So here's our shoe selection. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the size on this a little bit. We could fine tune our selection a little bit later. That's perfect. I think there's a little bit of white here. I could just take the magic eyedropper tool. Select it, go ahead and remove that white. So there's our cutout shoe, and I want to kind of add an angle to this a little bit. So let's just angle it. Because it looks kind of boring this way with the shoe going left to right. It looks a little more dynamic if we do this. And let me actually take my canvas size. I'm going to increase it, switch to pixels. Um, I think I'm going to add a little more height to my post here. Let me go back and unlock this. I know I'm moving kind of fast, but there's a lot of steps in this type of work. So let's lock it again. So now I have my nice unlock layer here. And I want to add kind of uh, a little bit of layout to this piece. So I, I want to add kind of a diagonal line that goes down just to add some dimension to this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just get the polygon lasso tool and I'm just going to draw kind of a simple diagonal kind of element. And if I wanted to get exact, I can go into Adobe Illustrator, draw it, and then import it in. But I'm just going to do something really simple. And I'm going to fill it in with a gradient, like maybe like a gold gradient. My, uh, I want to do a gold, gold theme. So let's just kind of pick one of these. I'm just double clicking on the uh, gradient, and I'm actually going to make my own. So I'm just dragging these down. I like these colors, but I want to take some of the brown and tan out of it and make it more of a gold. So I'm going to put some more yellow going over here to more of a gray gold. Maybe right about here. Kind of taking all that yellow. I don't like a yellow gold. I like kind of a gray tan gold. Add a little bit more color to that. More brown, just kind of playing around. Perfect. So now I'm just going to um, go ahead and click and drag and get my gradient loaded in here. And I'm actually going to bring this down. Oh, I needed to create a new layer. So let me go back, create a new layer. See, I, I put it on top of my shoe layer. So you need to create a new layer. And then now I can have it as a separate layer. Perfect. I'm going to take this and drag it under the shoe. I could do any kind of trimming I can do to make sure I get a nice even shape here. There we go. Perfect. So now it looks like the shoes are just kind of floating. So we need to add a little dimension by adding shadows. We're going to actually hand paint the shadows below the shoes. So 
So I'm going to create a new layer. We're going to create a lot of layers in this piece, just kind of forewarning. And I'm going to grab the brush tool and I'm going to get a nice standard feathered brush. So any of these will do. We'll click on this one. I need to get the right size. I don't want to make the shadow too big. Perfect. I think that's going to be great. I'm going to go ahead and select black. I can always go back and change my shadow color later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw where I think shadows. Let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. Where do I think the shadows are going to lay on this piece? So I think the light's kind of coming from this direction. Um, so I think a lot of the shadows are going to be cast down here. So let's go ahead and draw shadows all the way around and then we can always get the eraser tool and go ahead and delete where we think the shadows don't need to be anymore. Maybe there, maybe do some shadowing right here, back here. And I'm going to drag the shadow layer underneath the shoes. Perfect. I think that's great. I don't think I need to modify that too much. I think that's great. And the further away a shadow is, the further the distance is from the shoe to the, to the floor. So you want to have them kind of tight. So you don't want it to look like they're floating in air. You want to look like they're resting on the ground on this kind of gold piece. So let's make the shadows nice and tight. Great. And I can actually reduce the opacity on this layer. So it kind of adapts a little bit of that gold into the shadow. It's not such a harsh black like this. It's more subtle. Let's make it even tighter. Right about there, just fine tune it. Great. So now what I want to do is kind of modify the shoe because the green and gold is not matching at all. I really want to take this green and turn it into gold. Well, how do I do that? Uh, do I have to hand select all of these little items? No, there's actually a trick. Let me zoom back in. So to change this color from green to, to gold, we're going to go up to, go ahead and select our layer, go up to image, adjustments, and let's play around with the hue and saturation. What makes this easy is this is already gray and black, so the only color that's remaining is what we want to change. So we can get away with changing the hue and saturation of the entire image, and it's only going to change uh, the green color because there's no other colors but black. Um, so that's great news for us. That makes our job a lot easier. So you can see how it already is taking on a gold appearance. We want less green and more gold. Let's play around with saturation. I actually want to desaturate because I want it to be a nice uh, subtle gold with a little less saturation in it. I don't want it to be a yellowy gold. Uh, so let's not play with the lightness at all. So, so now that we've done that, let's actually go to selective color. We're just me messing around with some adjustments. Let's go ahead and select yellows and see if we can't eliminate some of the yellows or add more. We're just playing around see what looks better. Goes more with our gold theme. Adding a little more magenta seems to help. Uh, reducing the cyan helps. We see that's a little too orange, so we've got to be really careful. Let's go back to greens. Just playing around, seeing what looks good. I think I'm thinking that looks pretty good. So I think we're done with that. So we're just going back to adjustments. Let's continue to mess around with some of these options. Let's do shadow and highlights and kind of see what impact that has for us. Just trying to get the right balance, and this is just eyeballing it. We can always go back in our history if we don't like our selection. See, that's adding it's almost too much contrast. So go back to our history and let's toggle. I think we're okay with uh, what we have here. Uh, and we're going to go in and do some highlights and some shadows using our burn and dodge tool. A little bit later after we get the overall composition of the piece finished. So let's zoom out and let's work on the overall composition and then we could be able to match the colors even better. So we're working on overall composition. I already know that I kind of want to reduce the canvas size just a little bit just so we focus more on the shoes and have a little less extra space. I am going to have a little bit of typography so I want to leave room and a natural fit for typography is going to be here and here. So we could have a headline that runs across here and finishes up here. So let's go ahead and add some type. I um, already have a font selected, the bold font. I'm just looking for a really good bold sans serif font to use. 
and I'm just going to do run the letters run. I'm just going to make it big. And what's kind of cool about having layers is I can go ahead and tuck this behind both of my shoe layers, the shadow and the and the um, the regular shoe layer, and tuck it behind it. So you can kind of play around with layers and make it look like it's almost interacting with it. So I'm just going to double click here, and I actually have my character panel open, and I'm going to reduce some of the spacing or the kerning between the letters just a little bit so it's tighter feels more like one unit perfect and I'm actually going to add I'd love to add a gold gradient to this so all I'm doing is I'm double clicking getting my layer layer style panel on excuse me and I'm just clicking on gradient overlay and I have the little gold gradient we created earlier which matches our stripe I can change the direction of the gradient to have maybe the shadows come down here a little bit where the shoe is covering up. And I can actually change, oops, I can bring in a little bit more. There we go, perfect. Let's actually lighten this a little bit. Just kind of fine tuning. Great, that is great. So now that I like that, I'm actually going to duplicate the layer and I already have the same font and style applied. And I'm just going to do a really simple headline for gold, run for gold. So I'm going to double click and go to my character panel and I'm going to increase the spacing. Let's do auto, just to kind of see what we have here. Let me make that negative 25. And I'm going to go add a uh, collapse the spacing a little bit more. And I might have to do a custom number, so 222. Okay, how about 260? Just kind of trial and error. How about 250? All right, sold. That's perfect. Let's make it smaller, and I really need to... Um, four is not as important of a word. So I'm actually going to reduce the size of four so that gold can kind of stand out a little bit more. And that has a nice balance and composition as well. I'm going to make this big enough where maybe the D kind of tucks over this stripe to add more of that 3D layering feel to it. So we have this tucked underneath, that tucked over top, so great to add layers. So what is this needing? This is needing texture and uh, shadows and highlights to really make this pop out. And one of my favorite things to use in Photoshop is brushes. And I can actually download brushes. Uh, there's a website called um, Brusheasy, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's called Brusheasy.com and you can actually go on and find free Photoshop brushes to use. And, it, and brushes really help you add texture, dimension, and depth. So I actually loaded a couple of those brushes that I found, um, a couple of packs, I think one, I can show you on the screen now the pack that I actually downloaded that I'm going to be using, and they're right here. So I'm going to select a nice, uh, kind of just a round one, how about this one right here? And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm actually going to make this a little bit, a hair smaller, because that's a pretty large brush. Let's make it... Let's do 15 or 1700. Let's do that. Perfect. So I'm actually going to select, and you notice how when we first did the background, we did a kind of not all the way black, but kind of a dark gray. And that's because I want to add this brush now, and I'm going to do a black brush. And I'm going to do it in the background. You kind of see the effect that I'm going to have. So I'm going to click once, and maybe click twice. Just kind of having fun here. And I'm going to drag this layer all the way down to the bottom. Um, not all the way to the bottom, I'm going to keep my base layer there. But you notice how that added a lot of cool texture underneath. Now, so you have this dark gray and then you have the black, so you can kind of see the difference there. So That's one way to add texture. Um, there's another way I'm going to go ahead and click on our bar that we had did our gold gradient. And I'm actually going to really quickly go to adjustments. And let me go to Hue and Saturation and mess around with it just a little more. Just desaturating it a tad. 
just doing some really small adjustments to get the kind of gold that I like. And I like I like it darker. I can always add highlights later. There we go. Perfect. So now that I'm happy with that layer, um, a really cool way to add a little bit of texture without actually having to bring in a texture is to go to Filter, Noise, and go to Add Noise. So Filter, Noise, Add Noise, and you can actually add this, this noise that almost looks like a little bit adds texture to it. But it doesn't, as you can see, it doesn't take a lot to add a lot of texture. So you might even get away with, let's say in this case, maybe even 4%, so just a little bit. Look how little on the scale that's doing it. If you do it too much, it almost looks like static on a TV. But I'm just going to do 4%, click OK, and look how subtle that is. That's nice. Uh, so let's go back. That's before, and that's after. And I'm actually going to do the same thing to my base layer. I'm going to add a nice texture, and it's already uh, memorized. It already remembered my settings, so I'm just going to go filter add noise and it's going to apply the same 4% noise to that. And you could actually do the same thing to your uh, typography. So if I'm happy with this typography, I don't want to edit it again, I feel happy with the size and the composition, I can actually right click my layer and I'm going to rasterize type. So now um, it, it, it can no longer edit it, but now I can add texture and other things to the layer now that I've rasterized it. So that's an important step if you want to add texture, play around with the dodge tool with this, um, you need to right click and rasterize the layer. Um, so now I'm going to do the same thing. So add a little noise. And if I'm, I feel like I want to go back and edit that again maybe, I can always duplicate the layer and then just uh, hide the visibility on one of those copies. So I just have it in my uh, kind of my toolbox. If I ever want to recall it again, I have it unrasterized so I can go back and edit. So let's take this other copy, right click and rasterize type, and apply the same add noise. And I can actually take, um, this is where we can really play around with the dodge and the burn tools to add some depth and dimension. And actually, um, you can even right click and you can, you can rasterize the type. We already did that. And then you can rasterize the layer style. So right now it has a gradient overlay that we added. I'm not able to do any kind of edits because the gradient overlay is going to override it. So if I go over here to Dodge Tool and I try to bring out highlights, it's not going to do it because it's all the gradient overlay on the layer styles panel right here. It's overriding anything I try to do. So that's why if you right click and you rasterize layer style as well, now I'm able to go back and add some highlights and shadows using the dodge and burn tools. See, just like that. I have nothing overriding it. There's no layer styles on. So that's just a little trick. It took me a while to kind of figure all that out. And that's why you have me. So I'm, uh, right now I'm just playing around with the uh, burn tool. Highlights and shadows, finding out what I like the best. And that might be too much, so I can always go back in my history, reduce my brush size, just finding out what looks good. And I actually think midtones might work for this. I don't want too many shadows. I can go back to run as well, kind of add some more shadows here. And I think I need to right click and rasterize the layer style and run as well. I don't think that was. So I'm adding shadows here to look like the shoe is casting a little bit of a shadow. This adds a little more realism, a little more 3D to it. I'm going back and doing the dodge tool now. Oop, that's too bright. Switch to shadows. This is just me playing around. I don't know what's going to work until sometimes you do it. And then you go, okay, yeah, that works. So experimenting and playing around. So I'm pretty happy with the type. Let's continue doing some brushwork and some textures. This time I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to go to my brushes and I'm actually going to take a, first I'm going to take an eye, eyedropper tool and I'm going to sample some of this gold. So let me just click anywhere. Or maybe even, yeah, just click anywhere on here. I'm going to go back. This is an experiment. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I grab my brush tool and I have that little brush that I selected. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, maybe, maybe 1400. And I'm just going to click. And so I'm kind of trying to add 
There we go. I like that. Let's add it down here too. And I could even go back and grab a different shaped brush to add variety. Let's make it a little bit smaller, just so it doesn't look like I use the same brush over and over. So I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this layer. I'm just toggling the visibility so I can kind of see what layer I'm selecting. And I want to sharpen it a little bit. So I'm going to go up to Filter, Sharpen, Sharpen More. So that just kind of adds more richness to the texture, really brings out the edges. So I'm liking that. So I'm actually going to select this. I'm going to work on this little area, this little um, diagonal shape. And I'm going to add a drop shadow in my layer styles panel. Oh, that looks great. And I can um, adjust the distance and the size. Ooh, that's like, that's nice. Perfect. So this is when we're going to have um, more fun with layering and texture. So I feel like this is still flat, like the text is not really interacting with the splatters or anything. It feels like it's uh, just kind of plopped in there. So let's kind of integrate this, uh, this type more into this texture. So an easy way to do that is I'm going to create a new layer on top of both of these. So here's my type. Let's create a new layer on top. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that brush. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, let's say 800 pixels. And I'm just going to click anywhere. I'm going to do, let's do black. Click there. I'm going to click there. Now let me go back. Let me kind of integrate. There we go. All we're doing is bringing that te texture. And this is the new texture we just added on top. So I have it highlighted. I'm going to go up and sharpen more so I can bring out more of the edges. And I want this to be screened back. I don't want it to overtake the type. I want the type to be very readable, very legible. So I'm selecting this layer and I'm going to play around with the blending mode a little bit and to see if there's a blending mode that I think will work well. There's overlay, luminosity. I can even just um, reduce the opacity a little bit on it as well. That's an option which I might end up doing that. Soft light looks really good, and I'm going to reduce the opacity as well. So it's just enough to integrate a little bit of that texture in there. If I could really have fun, actually, I could take the eraser tool and take the brush, because the eraser tool is pretty much the brush. Um, it just erases instead of adds, and I can pick one of these. I can literally erase it. So that's one option. Doop. I go back for gold. Just click once. Just that little bit of splatter. This is actually deleting a little bit of it. Just, just having fun here. Oh, let me go back to run. Click once. Maybe that might be too much. I don't know. Play around. Once you delete it, it's already deleted from that shape. So let me actually go back in my history. I think that might be a little too much. So I'm going to add a new layer and do it as a brush instead of an eraser. And we could just keep doing layering it on. But I think I think I'm okay with just that little bit. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, so I'm trying to think. I think we can add a little bit more dimension to this little horizontal bar. Let's actually duplicate it. So layer, duplicate layer. And so now I have two of these diagonal shapes here. And I'm just taking the arrow keys and I'm just moving, going to the left, and then I'm going down. I'm just kind of shifting this layer down a little bit to add almost like a, a second little layer underneath. And let me just, I'm just playing around here, seeing what works. I drop the drop shadow. Interesting. So let me actually, this is the top layer. I'm going to uh, go ahead and toggle off the drop shadow. And I'm actually selecting the bottom layer. And let me see if I can't make this layer a little bit darker. So let me go to brightness and contrast. And reduce the, the brightness a little bit. So that almost looks like it's on a little 3D platform now. 
And let me drag, I'm just moving the layers around to see if I can get kind of a, a neat effect here. There we go. And I'm just using my arrow keys to kind of nudge the layer around, maybe make it a tighter look, just like a thin. Perfect. So let's continue to play around. I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to add a black, uh, I think we're missing something right here. This is too much kind of plain area. So I'm going to take our brush tool and add a black. And let's, let's do a different shape. Let's do one we haven't done. How about this one? Make it a little smaller. Almost like a donut shape. And let me click make sure my opacity is 100%. Let's reduce this down to 1100. I have this as a new layer. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if I like the donut shape. I don't like the hole there. So let's do this one and then 1700. Ooh, that's too much. So let's reduce that back to 1100. This one with photo manipulations, you're just always undoing, redoing. You're always trying to experiment with stuff. You never get it right the first time. So that might be too much. So I like that, but let me make it even smaller. You don't want to overpower, especially with black. Maybe you can do it up top. Look like it's coming in. Maybe there. Perfect. Now I'm actually going to crop this a little bit because I do think, and this is on a separate layer, I can always delete it layer, uh, later if I don't like. Or I can take the eraser tool, go ahead and get my standard brush back, and just delete that part. Whoops. That's a big brush, 5,000 pixels. Whew. That's... I'm going to erase that part, but I actually like the black splattering right there, so I'm going to keep that. So now this layer only has that little small portion on the bottom. So let me see if I can't crop this a little bit. I'm going to move this over. Ooh, that's neat how it's tucking under the D like that. That is nice. Um, so let me go ahead and crop this. That's too much space over there to the left. I think that's perfect. Enter. Make this a little bit bigger, even though we already rasterized it, so you gotta be careful. Now I'm just playing around. And actually I can go and take, if I wanna add a shadow, we do word the burn tool. I'm gonna add just a little bit of shadowing right here along the D, so it looks like the shadow's coming through a little deeper. Great. So I'm really liking how this piece is coming along. I think uh, now it's time to just kind of fine tune. I think the overall composition is good. So let's go ahead and select our diagonal. Now I'm just playing around, selecting our diagonal shape, and I'm gonna add some really large highlights and shadows to it. So I'm just taking a nice standard feathered brush, making it large. Maybe not quite that large. Right in between. Just seeing what happens if I start to add. That doesn't seem to be doing much, does it? Ah, that's because that's the wrong layer. That's the layer underneath. Let me select the layer on top. There we go. There it goes. So now we can kind of add. Ooh, look at that. That's wonderful. So all I, all I did was I selected the dodge tool and I'm just highlighting certain parts of this kind of area. Let me take the burn tool and do the same thing. See what, what a lot of these uh, effects happen by accident. You're just layering things and adding texture and then you just, things just happen. Uh, you don't mean for them to happen, but you know, like Bob Ross said, they're happy accidents. Sometimes things happen and you're like, ooh, I like that and you just kind of stick with it. 
So I'm just going back on my history if I don't like a certain step. And this layer on top I think is great. It's almost it's really overpowering. Um, hmm. Let me see if I can't take the eraser tool. Maybe erase some of it. And this is just playing around with options. Let me make that a little bit bigger. Ooh, that's too big. Sometimes I gotta manually type in numbers because it's such a sensitive scale. There we go. So if I don't like uh, the way a certain layer, maybe the color, I can always just select that layer and go to adjustments, image adjustments, and play around with it, make it darker, brighter, whatever I think is missing. Contrast. Okay, great. So now it's time for the finishing touches. I feel like the shoe needs a little bit more detailed work. So let's go ahead and zoom in and let's see what we could do to make the shoe a little bit better. So let me see if I can sharpen it and make it pop out a little bit more because all the texture around it is very sharp. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it's already a little bit better. It looks higher resolution when we do that as well. So let's play around with highlights and shadows using our dodge and burn tool. So let's do dodge tool first. And this is really where it really can come to life. So I'm taking highlights, setting it on highlights first to see how it looks. And I'm just gonna highlight certain things like, this is the brand name. So we really want that to pop out if this is gonna be an advertising piece. So let's make that a little bit smaller. Make our brush just so it covers these areas. I'm just clicking twice. One, two, one, two. Really want the, the branding to come out maybe in any kind of technology or things we want to highlight this cloud tech writing over here as well. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to highlight? That's probably pretty good. Here, here's a little bit here that we can highlight. But let's make the brush a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can't highlight some of these accent, uh, the gold part. And I like to flip around between shadows and highlights to see what looks better. Uh, I think highlights looks really good. Oh, that's too much, so we can always reduce the exposure if we think it's too strong. This is probably my favorite tool in uh, the Photoshop tool belt is this right here, is the dodge and burn tool. I use it so much. So if you can master this tool, you're going to be ahead of the game. Because just these little things. This is not the best photograph. This is a free one I found online of shoes. I you can always find one a little better. Um, this is just how I'm just using this for an example. It's not the best best shoe I've ever seen before. So Let's see if we can't that's almost too bright. So let me actually take the burn tool And let's do the same thing and see if we can't bring out Accentuate any shadows. Let's make some shadows here and Play around with highlights instead Make the blacks blacker and the highlights lighter. I don't like the, I really want to accentuate the, the laces a little bit, but I'm trying to figure out the best way. I just want you to just experiment. Yeah, I think that those shoelaces are already as bright as they're going to get. Let's go ahead and zoom out to see how our piece looks from afar as a total piece. So now what we could do as our final step, I'm just gonna fine tune shadows real quick. Let's go ahead and highlight this entire layer and go to adjustments and see if we can do any final adjustments to let the shoe kind of match with the other gold. I feel like this is almost too yellowy Somehow I need to kind of match these two golds together a little better. So I wonder if I can play around with vibrance. Maybe reduce the vibrance a little bit. So I have it this way. See how that's this really yellow classic gold bar look. And this is 
way more, a little bit more tan. So let's reduce vibrance just a little bit. Increase saturation. Ooh, that's not what we want, so maybe desaturate it a little bit. So if I go back in my history and toggle, I can see kind of it, it did desaturate, take a little bit of that yellow out. And this is just fine tuning. This is where you just have to judge and see. Ooh, I kind of like adding a little bit of red in there. That's nice. A little bit of blue. Gosh, this is where it's hard because you just, some, some options are obvious, but some options you don't know. You, sometimes you like it this way and you, you like it both ways and it's hard to decide what you think would look better. So let's go. There's desaturate, there's shadow highlights. I'm gonna play around with something crazy and do gradient map, but I don't think that's gonna work. Yikes. That's gonna be a little too crazy for what we're doing. Maybe for another ad, but let's not do gradient map. I feel like the contrast is really high. So let's go to adjustments. Let's do two more things. Let's do exposure. Let's see what exposure does for us. I feel like there's almost too many, too much highlights right here in the black area. I want to reduce the shine a little bit. So I'm trying to find the best way to reduce the shine. Photo filter. Let me see if I can't add a little bit of a warm texture. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm just adding a little bit of a warming filter to the, doing the photo filter. I'm going to toggle and see what I like better. See, adding a little bit of that warmth to the black really helps match it with the gold. That's great. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit and find the best way to go ahead and uh, kind of bring down the highlights in the black a little bit so they're not so distracting. So I did find something that's going to help me out with my shoe. So I'm going to go ahead and select my shoe later, layer and I'm going to go ahead and play with shadow and highlights which is really making a big difference in the shoe. So I'm going to play around with a lot of these options and see what I think looks better. And this is, there is no, and there is a science to this, but sometimes it's better just to see what looks better. Ooh, that's looking nice darker, a bit lighter. I'm trying to take away the shine, so maybe. I feel like this uh, mid-tone always has such a dramatic effect. So let's go ahead and click OK and toggle. So before, after, before, after. I feel like that has a little bit more of a polished look. I'm just going to brightness, contrast. Let me reduce the contrast just a tad. Don't want to reduce the brightness. I don't want this thing to disappear. Let's go toggle, see if I like what happened. Great. So I'm going to add a few more finishing touches in terms of adding more texture to the font and I'll show you what my final looks like in a minute. So I took another 10 minutes and I was able to significantly modify this a little bit to tone down all the gold. I feel like there was a lot of gold going on so I just desaturated this kind of uh, diagonal line that goes across the bottom and I think it really helps the shoe and the words to really pop out. So I think that was a positive change. I actually went back and I took the uh, burn tool and the dodge tool but specifically I took the burn tool and just uh, brushed it along the edge down here to add a little bit of a 3D depth to this little platform here so you could see the little bit of that shadow kind of makes it look like a round platform which is kind of what I was wanting to go for. I also changed the color here to take away uh, from the too much of the gold going on. I added a few little textures around it and I also added a little bit more to the text. Some texture I went down and did the noise. I added a little bit of noise 
to kind of uh, bring a little more richness to the texture. I thought it was too flat. And other than that, I just tried to match the gold with the shoe a little bit better. So they're both kind of the same type of gold and just kind of added. I actually did a little trick and I duplicated my shoe layer. And so it's a separate layer and I went down and went to blur and did a motion blur. And I did it a diagonal motion blur, just like this. I want to add a little motion. So uh, I, I went down to desaturate. And so I, I, I was able to create this cool texture. And I could sharpen it. Sharpen. And I was able to kind of have this cool texture. You can kind of see it running across a little bit right there. So I was able to kind of bring that beneath some of the layers and add it uh, to certain areas and screen it back a little bit. So you can see it very subtly here and a little bit here along the shoe. And we can even simplify this graphic more and clean it up. We can like take away certain layers. Um, we can crop it differently. If we feel like it's too busy, we can screen back certain effects. So down here, uh, maybe I just reduce the opacity so there's not as much contrast between the layers. Clean it up. Whatever you feel like would uh, make it less busy. Or you can go back in here, make this all black so it kind of blends in a little better. Whatever you think would help clean it up a little bit, because I think it's a little busy. That's the only thing I would probably fine tune is make it a little less, little less texture. But overall, I think I'm pretty happy. I did this in about, I don't know, a half hour, 45 minutes, just kind of throwing together a graphic. Uh, this is what I put together before, and I actually kind of like what we did here. And I would, of course, go in and fine tune this. I would actually take a little brightness away. And a lot of these things, if you want to perfect it for an ad, they take a few hours. You would go in and continue to refine, add layers. You may recut the shoe out and try again in terms of getting the right adjustments to the image. But overall, I'm very happy. I Hopefully you learned a lot through this whole process. And uh, you learned, practiced your Photoshop tools. And now you know how to cut things out. You know how to do uh, layer styles. You know how to do adjustments. And now you know how to do brushes and add texture and depth to your piece.